your athletic program the recognition it deserves and student athletes the recognition that they need for college with Circle W Sports. Circle W Sports is a fully functional platform to run your school district's entire athletic department. Build a district-wide or team-centered website. Fully manage your schedules, rosters, and coaching staff. Track your student-athlete stats across all sports and games during their careers with our all-encompassing statistical platform. And create press about your district, teams, and student-athletes in ways that traditional media cannot do. Plus, Circle W Sports helps bring your trophy cases to life. Showcase your team's championships, college athletes, head coaches, and varsity records. Just enter your data and let the Circle W Sports platform do the rest. It's really been a one-stop shop for college coaches where they can go in there and they can find information about not only one player, but the rest of our team, guys that they might not be thought they were interested in before they went to the website. So Circle W has really done that. It links highlight films, contact information, and everything that the coach would need. From scores, stats, and standings to rosters, records, and team history, Circle W Sports is the online platform to thoroughly promote your school district athletic teams and student athletes. Circle W has been absolutely outstanding in doing that for our student athletes. Teams don't have to scout us because all they have to do is go to the site. Now we're having our kids being recognized uh, not only within the state, um, outside the state, thousands of miles away. Uh, college coaches as far as recruiting, things like that, are really recognizing our guys and what they're doing and putting our program on the map. Take it from two former Wellsboro student athletes. Growing up in a small town. It's important to get your name out there if you want to play at the next level. Circle W Sports helped me get the exposure I needed. From the creator of WellsboroAthletics.com and WellsboroFootball.com, Circle W Sports is now the official online platform for PIAA District 4 and the Northern Tier League. Contact us today at CircleWSports.com. Circle W Sports, the new name in the game for high school sports. At Game Changer Sports Ministry, we use a sports platform to teach our faith-based team values of teamwork, excellence, authority, and maturity. Each summer, we offer our Game On faith-based sports camps featuring lacrosse, softball, volleyball, cross-country, soccer, tennis, and golf. Our camps are led by top NCAA coaches and athletes. Another mission of Game Changer Sports Ministries is our student-led and student-run teams for high schools and colleges. A team is a faith-based sports club. Check out our website for more information. I would recommend becoming an official um, because you can feel like you're a part of a sport that you love. We officiate for the athletes and for the sport that we love. And so as long as you keep them first, then it's going to be a great experience. So the money I've made from officiating for the past few years, I've put all that money into savings to pay to finish my college education. In six months when I complete that, I will not be in any debt. The officiating the state championship and getting that call to officiate the state championship was an emotional thing for me, just because of what I've been through, you know, the ups and downs, and the, getting that call really meant a lot to me. Sometimes I see student athletes uh, that I officiated years and years and years ago, and they say, man, you did a great job. Thanks for, thanks for everything you've done. For 20 years, The Funding Zone has been Pennsylvania's best fundraising company for high school sports programs and youth organizations. From discount cards to coupon books, tumblers, cookie dough, apparel, and online giving, there are many ways in which The Funding Zone can help your team, booster club, or organization raise money. With six full-time representatives in Pennsylvania, there are no teams too big or small. We can assist with absolutely no minimums to buy or sell, no upfront fees or costs, and zero risk to your program. For more information, call or text Mike at the number below. Whether you're at Ted's 22, Ted's in Midtown, or Ted's in Anvil, you'll be sure to have a great experience with mouth-watering food, domestic and craft beers, along with every game, you'll be sure to be satisfied. We'll see you next time at one of our three awesome locations.
We said we're live. That, it's your, it, yeah, exactly. Let's do it. I think we're live. We're live from Ted's Bar and Girl. We're having a good time. It's PA Football News and my guests, Eric Thomas, Eric Eppel from Penn Live, Ed Weaver from Circle W Sports. This is PFN Presents, the state of PA Football News. And we're doing a Hershey preview show tonight, guys. Big weekend. Six, Big weekend. six championship games, all at Hershey Park Stadium, affectionately known as the Concrete Palace. <laughs> ET loves that one, too. Uh, two games Thursday, two Friday, two Saturday. All big games. Huge All big games. games, good matchups. Uh, yeah, it's it's always exciting. Not yeah, only to have the championships. Lots of new blood this year. Should be, should be an interesting weekend. Uh, it's you know it's good to see. Obviously, you want some of the mainstays like Southern Club. You can bring a good crowd. Right. Uh, one local team in Central Off, which hopefully will draw a big crowd. You know, Thomas Jefferson seems like they've been kind of a team of destiny to get here. So it's good to see them back. And you know, let's hope we get good crowds and the weather holds out. We got a good weekend. Get some new teams. Yeah, uh, Chellingham, Avonworth, uh, Dallas making a, a trip down here this weekend. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Man. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be. We're going to have some fun. This weekend, yeah, we are. and uh, then you know, then you have the other side of it where Southern Columbia um, they just broke I don't, pretty much every record that ever existed in Pennsylvania um, over the last three years, and uh, it's been a fun ride and a lot of fun watching those guys play. But uh, you know, I think we're going to start off right now by uh, what are some of the memories you had this year? What are your best memories of football this year? And this year, I mean, I think I'm going to probably steal some of the here because we're from the same area, but. I don't know if it got any better than that Harrisburg Central Off regular right season game, the 15-14 game, and all the stuff that happened at the end of it with the clock and all that kind of stuff. I mean, is it a good memory? No. Is it a, is it a quirky one that, you, that you're not going to forget? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Are they going to buy a new clock? Well, it's the great sport heist game, and that really turned the fortunes too for Central Dolphin, if you really think about it. Central Dolphin, it seemed to me, ET, and you, you know, you've been there every step of the way with those guys, it seemed to me like they were searching sort of for some little thing to happen. It wasn't major. The elements were in place, but when you get a boost like that, you just, you take it and run. You know, and that's exactly what they did. Everybody in their right mind said after that game that if you're the visiting team, Get off the field. Yeah. If you're the home team, do what you do what Cal did and argue all you want. But if yep. you're the visiting team, take the win and get going. That's it. Yep. Absolutely. And, yeah. It seemed to kickstart them. Um, Central Dolphin was playing good football, but that game seemed to be the game that threw them up to the next level. And then, of course, they went up to State College and, and uh, uh, they just you know that game was a mess for three quarters and then they just put it to State College and you know kudos to Glenn McNamee. He, he, he changed it up a little bit this year at the end of the year throwing the ball a little bit more, uh, scoring more points. Yeah, the big difference for me was you start a sophomore quarterback, you don't expect that progression to happen as quickly as it did, but Max Moses is a kid who just said, give me the ball. Trust in me, yep. Coach McNamee. It's hard for Coach McNamee to trust a sophomore, especially in that prime position when you're expected not only to produce, but you're supposed to manage the offense and be a leader at the same time. He's done all three. Can I change my memory real quick? Can I make it seeing the assistant coaches from Central Dauphin strapped into a lift above that field at State College, like literally buckled in <laughs> to a bucket about 40 feet in the air above the field? Like that, that to me is probably the biggest memory of the year. That, that's one of my biggest memories of the year. Uh, State College, you know, I live in that area, so covering State College, and, I mean, they, really, they did a great job. They had a scramble to get a, put a field together great job. so yeah. that they could play at home because they couldn't find a place to play their games. You know, for what they had to do, they did a great job up there. Uh, one of my other memories was uh, a few weeks ago, Phil and I went down to uh, cover Strathaven and Garden Valley and stuff, and before we left, we, we had found out that the whole area got hit by a tornado. <laughs> so it took about an hour to get to a field that should have took me 15 minutes to get to from our hotel room. We, we know a little bit about those sort of uh, piped up weather situations, <laughs> especially out in Lancaster area. It, things just sort of happen in Campbelltown and all the way out to Lancaster. It's, it's all funky out there. So Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, we had some weather. Not 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 huge. Not where we, we actually had to turn back games and things like that. Because normally we have a few that are moved in the Mondays and things like that. But we got yeah. pretty lucky yeah. so far. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. So far. Yeah. Still, still three, days three days left. Days left. Yeah, I got three still days, three days, three days yeah. left. Uh, if I could change another memory. Um, last year, we were wet. 
<laughs> hey, Hollywood's in the house. There's Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood's in the house. But last year we were wet. And this year I didn't see one raindrop. Well, I think I saw one. Well, you did in Altoona. I, let's, let's just face it. You go to Altoona, you get rained on. I or, did not get rained on in Altoona. Uh, you for must the first have been time else. in a year. <laughs> Had to be somewhere else. You know, of course, Eric, you were there with me. You also can't forget the... Uh, we got to do a high school football game at Beaver Stadium this year. We did. Yeah, we did. You know, State College. It was pretty impressive. The crowd was great. I think they listed it. I think they announced around 5,800, uh, yeah. which to me is fabulous. Uh, and it looked good. They kept everybody on one side, so it looked even better. And we saw a heck of a football game. And Cumberland Valley, I don't think many expected them to, to give State College a run up there. But they gave them all they could handle. And that was a good sign for CV. It was really had a top uh, up and down year with injuries and things like that. That's one of our our 6A powers here in District 3. And, you know, in State College, they, they did they did the work. State College did the work. Uh, to me, it's a blue-collar group. And, uh, you know, getting that far and, and narrowly losing the Pittsburgh Central Catholic shows you how far that can keep Let's can. hope that they keep that tradition of that game going, too. I think that needs I to happen so, every year. I hope so, yeah. I hope it's so. A little yeah. tough. We'll see what, they, what the reaction to that is, like, after, you know, six, seven months down the road or yes. if they start planning it before the year. But, I mean, that, we need something outside of Pittsburgh more centralized to where we are, where there's three or four games in two days or something like that. I mean, Beaver Stadium, week zero would be perfect for it. There's nothing going on there. They've got the field down, the turf's all taken care of. And Yeah, I know. mean, if, if yeah. James Franklin sticks around, which all indications are he will, at least he says he will, I think he's a real huge, huge proponent for that. And it's uh, and it's good for them. It's good for the Knits. It's good for us. And, uh, you know, it's a heck of a good road trip on a Saturday. So I hope, about I hope it continues. Trip, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hope it continues. Let's hope. That is good. It, it, and, you know, for the state championship games, I think that would be a great venue. I, 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 I do. I personally do. Um, personally, I think personally, I think we should try to get um, a little bit smaller. I think you, you, your FCS programs are in, in the state, your Lehigh's, your Lafayette's, your Bucknell's, uh, St. Francis, in other words. And you've, yeah, got some really, you know, and you've got some really good Division II and Division III stadiums as well. We're lucky in that way in Pennsylvania. Now, I know it's difficult because once those seasons are done for those colleges, the stadiums are winterized and shut down. That's they, right. lock, yeah. they lock the gate. you got to bring back the personnel. So it's tough. But I would love to see it two years here, two years at St. Francis, two years at Lafayette or Lehigh, two years at Bucknell. Moved around. It's nothing against Hershey. It's been a great host for, for the PIW championships. The location is good. And the teams from the East and West want to come to Hershey. That's a big deal for them. But I think it would be it would benefit the state to have it move around. I wonder if there's ever a time where they go back to the old way, where you know one when we had four, one game was here, one game was here, yes. one game was here. Because uh, like even you mentioned the the universities, Shippensburg would be fantastic. Absolutely. They don't have lights, so yeah. how, how do you have yeah, a night? Right. You, you can't yeah, have right. a night game there. So it's you know, but they could certainly host a one o'clock kick you know somewhere. But do we ever get to the point like the Whitfield did where they break down the games and have, you know, obviously you're going to keep on the same weekend, but have one game right. here, maybe two here, two here, well, and two here. But That's how it started out. Yeah, and it may be a situation where you, if a Shippensburg University, say, for example, would do a Thursday 1A, Friday 2A, then you may be able to get four games in a day like the Whitfield does at Heinz Field. That may be a possibility on a good turf field, something that's new. Excellent point. Yep. But um, yeah, it's it's tough. For right now, you know, Hershey gives them a sweet. Hershey gives the PIAA a great deal. Um, and quite frankly, last time it came up for bid, one time you brought that one, up the other one, night. Yep. One group bid for the state championships, and that was Hershey. Yeah. That's it. So it's tough to deny them that. You're right. Yeah, and and that's where it comes from. I mean, you know, they they tried, and people don't understand. You know, they don't understand how difficult it is. It, oh. And it, it really is, and you know, I hear a lot about it. You know, and when when they talk about like why didn't this site get chose for the playoff game, and why yeah. did that site get? But people really don't understand, especially over Thanksgiving weekend, where ninety nine percent of the schools are done with football for four weeks. Yeah. They're closed up. The the their snack bars are emptied out. Right. Uh, the pipes are drained. Unions are involved. Un- with workers. Unions are you know, involved. Yeah, good point. Very good there's point. just yep. there's a ton of stuff that goes on in order for them to get a stadium. And I know I talked to Homer last week, Homer DeLotter, up at uh, right. Haltysburg, and he said they felt bad, but their stadium was still going because they have soccer and stuff going on there. Mm-hmm. So you you also have to share with soccer. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, you have to share with multiple sports. And, yeah. you know, you and I talked about this too. Uh, we, we kid a lot about Mansion Park Stadium, you know. But, but if it wasn't for that place this year – 
Or last year. Uh, or last year. I mean, at one point, they hosted five or six games within a 10-day period there of playoffs. So not for Mason Park and the good good guys at District 6 and Phil Riccio, you know, the AD at Altoona. I mean, you're, you're, you're looking at spacing those things out all across District 6. You know. And even in the five. And I'm a big fan of Phil's. Um, he's a great guy, and he does a great job. And, you know, I said it last year. He saved high school football last year. Absolutely. He saved I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. They needed a place, too, and they're good at they're, – they're, it's similar to Hershey where they're they, – they're good at running football games. They're good at clearing – they can clear snow. They have personnel who just flock there. Yeah. They volunteer to do it, these guys. It's amazing that, that – you know, and that's why they get so many events. And it's a great – it's a great venue, too. It really is. And they're, they're very – they're very uh, uh, accepting of, of media. Yes. They do a lot. They go out of their way. And like I said, these guys aren't these guys aren't being paid millions to show up and freeze their keisters off. No, and they're you know, very clear good at what snow. they do too. Right. And Ed, what are some of your memories from this year? I mean, the biggest memory for me is definitely the, the Beaver Stadium Classic. I mean, just you know, being a pure Penn State fan and uh, you know, getting to see kind of the behind the curtain, if you will. Getting access to the locker room, get, you know, having the team show up off the bus, getting them, you know, right before anybody sees, you know, what you know goes on with the actual on the field, you know, preparation, warm up, et cetera, et cetera. But just that whole day, it, it was so much fun. I mean, weather conditions were, were great for high school football. I mean, Beaver Stadium is always you know good shape, you know, turf wise. But just seeing that atmosphere and you know seeing. Uh, Cumberland Valley State College get a chance to play in Beaver Stadium. That it was just so much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. You know, nope. You're not going to get any arguments from me there. Yeah. No, it's, it was a, it was a pretty good atmosphere. It turned out to be great weather. I mean, it was, you know, we beat that we beat the rain. Yeah. You know, just by just by nose and uh, yeah, it was a fun fun atmosphere that day. And, I mean, what a game too. I know. You, know, you, you kind of touched on it earlier with yep. you know nobody really gave. I guess, you know, Cumberland Valley a, a shot and, you know, they're, I didn't. you know, <laughs> I mean, making a run for it right in the first half there. That's, you know, State High kind of turned it on in the second half yep. and kind of took over and dominated. But, I mean, that was a, that was a great game. Yeah, it was really the first time, too, all year that Cumberland Valley was healthy, yeah. fully healthy. I mean, they were, they were so banged up. Uh, I know their running back had been out three, four games. Their, their starting linebacker had been out three, four games. They had lost some linemen. So it was really the first, week 10 was really the first time they had all the guys on the field since week one. So it was good to see that. It was good. To, and, you know, and quite frankly, it was good to see State College pressed, yeah. you know, because I know that only helps you in and then, and then a couple of next, the weeks to come. So it was good. Yeah. So uh, what do you say we talk some football? Yeah, I think so. Uh, tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon at uh, 1 o'clock, uh, yep. we got a football game to talk about. We do. And uh, it's a rematch from 2015. Mm-hmm. Farrell, Bishop Guilfoyle, the Steelers, and the Marauders. And, uh, guys, what are your thoughts on this uh, matchup? Uh, Eric, what do you think of this matchup coming in tomorrow? Really interesting contrast in styles here because, I mean, obviously Farrell, they lose all those D1 guys from a year ago, but they were really good last year. They were never really in any danger of losing that game a season ago with Trail. Guilfoyle has been so resilient this year with the injuries, Myrick and, and the quarterback situation, and having to piece that whole thing together in the middle part of the year. Myrick obviously was out with the, I think he had a leg injury mm-hmm. early on in the season. Brady, Brady Bithel missed the uh, Richland game. Yep, yep, which uh, they didn't obviously do well in that game, but they have been resilient all year long. They were resilient against Trail because their defense was on the field what seemed like 12 and a half hours in that first <laughs> exactly. quarter against Lackawanna yeah. Trail. But, I mean, they and if, if they can be that game. resilient – Tomorrow they're gonna they'll be able to make some hay, but that's gonna be t- easier said than done. Yeah, and and as uh, the running game goes, is as the st- Steelers go, forty one hundred yards, forty two hundred yards on the ground. We're gonna say that a lot Farrell. this weekend in terms and, of teams. And, yeah, so, yeah, you're right. A lot of rushing yards. Uh, we were talking about that earlier, but uh, you know, Anthony Stallworth, the sophomore, sixteen hundred yards rushing. Mm-hmm. Um, they just do it every year up at Farrell. They do a great job, of course. Ampeg's new new coach this year, and Anthony was supposed to be here, but uh, we don't see him in the audience here, so uh, we'll, we'll try to go through without him. Thanks, coach. But uh, you know, that's <laughs> on. Ed, you, you were there at the game for Lackawanna Trail. What do yeah. you think of Bishop Guilfoyle? Uh, you know, kind of like what Eric was saying. I mean, they're they're kind of resilient. You know, they their defense bent but didn't break. Uh, <laughs> 
train of thought there. Oh, that's <laughs> not. You know, Lackawanna Trail started the game off. They controlled, you know, they put out a, a 10 minute, you know, first quarter drive. I mean, that first quarter lasted basically 18, you know, minutes of regular time. And, um, you know, like we were talking about earlier this afternoon, Keegan Myrick, I mean, he just kind of did everything for Bill Foyle. I mean, you know, line him up a quarterback, receiver, uh, running back, and put him out in the slot a few times. They want to get the ball to him, and their offense just kind of, you know, seemed to flow, you know, through and around him, you know, the whole game. And, I mean, he made some, some great plays, both offensively, two big interceptions that kind of flipped momentum against Trail. And, I mean, I, he was definitely the player in the game. Um, last week. They, they have not gotten rattled despite being a really, really young team either. Yeah. That's that's something that you rarely see with young teams, especially when you put them in bigger spotlights. They just don't know how to kind of react to those moments. And, I mean, you're looking up and down their lineup or looking up and down their roster. I mean, there's hardly seniors anywhere on there. It's all sophomores, juniors, some freshmen in some cases, you yeah. know. And they're not getting rattled by the moment. I mean, a, a mere mortal team that young – after that drive in the first quarter last weekend, would have completely melted, and they didn't. They came right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, looking at their lineup right here, um, you're right. A lot of juniors uh, showing up on this lineup here. So, and they, the other, this is a key I think that you'll see in the Wood game on Friday night with Sheltonham. Don't discount the fact that some of these kids that were on that basketball team that made it to the state final in March this year too. So that, that has a carryover effect. I mean, Epp and I see a team here in Redland that finally implemented some of their baseball players yeah. on that football team. That completely changed the culture of the whole program this year. Yeah. So if you, you have that, that winning mentality, it doesn't matter what sport it is, but if it carries over and these kids are used to travel and they're used to Hershey and they've been in this environment before, that's going to that's gonna go a long way to helping them out in this game, especially against a team like Farrell, who's a perennial you know, contender every single year. Yeah, yeah you, every year. And, and, of course, you know, and then – once we get through this year, and we'll just mention it briefly, but from what I've heard, uh, Farrell bumps up next year to 2A. Yeah, I think we get those on Friday. Yes, Friday They come out with the, the yep. awards, yep. So that's going to be interesting. Farrell and Wilmington battling together up in District 10 right now. You know, that, that, that could change the way things happen up in District 10. Man. It probably will. Now, it's, but, something yeah. needs to change in District 10 because it's, it's kind of like every year it's like, all right, yeah. that team's going to be there, that team's going to be there, that team's going to be there. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty predictable, yep. yeah. yeah. yeah it's it has been much. very predictable, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I agree. And for Farrell, you know, um, they're, they've scored 593 points and only given up 98 this year. So their defense is tough, too. Brian Hilton, a uh, heck of a defender, does a great job for Farrell. Their defense is just mean. Uh, size and speed kills. Yeah. Uh, Farrell's got both. Yeah. Uh, the size of these guys up front, uh, probably, you would think it's probably at least – a 4A team, if not a 5A team. They're big. Uh, I don't know what they average up front. I just saw a little bit of snippet and saw a video of them and uh, saw some film work, did some film work against them, and they're massive. And they're massive, and they run downhill on you. Uh, I, I just, you know, I've seen Bishop Guilfoyle be this kind of blue-collar team that, they, that they've always been. They were even that when they were pounding guys and running downhill. In the mid mid two thousand, you know, the last couple of times they were here, uh, when they went on that run of PIAA championships, but I just, you know, I, I thought I thought District Six in, in that level was a little bit down. Other than Juniata Valley, I thought they could give them a little something. I thought Six A one Six One A was a little bit down this year, uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing how they sort of get up to speed with with a Farrell who's going to want to beat the edges, who's going to want to kind of just take over the line of scrimmage. I want to see that in, in the early part of this football game. Um, because if you if you weather that storm and you start to put a little doubt in Farrell, you know, Guilfoyle can win this football game. You're I talking about their... Go yeah, I was actually surprised at the uh, at the way Bishop Guilfoyle handled Juniata Valley because I had seen Juniata yeah. Valley the week before against a really, a, really a, a purchase line team that came on strong mm -hmm. and at the end of the year. And... They had some trouble at the beginning of the game, but boy, they went to the edges and they were fast. Juniata Valley was very fast on the edges, and Bishop Guilfoyle found a way to, to stop that speed. You're talking about their size across the front, left to right for Farrell 305, 350, 295, 282. The smallest guy, 6'4, 230. So roughly 290 pounds <laughs> across, across the board. Yeah. Yeah, that pretty much big. That's tough, man. I, I, I know you could go the other way and say, hey, listen, if we. If we just stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, they'll tuck her out. But I don't know. I mean, they held 
you hold Claritin to 10 points in a barn burner last week, that says a lot to me. I agree. So, gentlemen, uh, do we want to do any kind of predictions for, the, for this game? Or you want to do them now or you want to do them at the end? Should we let them go or should we, uh, we do them at the end? I say we do them. Let's do them game by game. What the do hell? them game, game by game. game. All right. There you All go. Right. Let's start with you, Eric. What do you think of this game? Where do you think it's going to go? I really want to see Guilfoyle again. Uh, they've been so resilient. I, I'd like to see this to be a, a tight game. I, I just I have to lean on that size. I have to. You know, we talked about championship mentality. This is a feral team that's coming back to win again. So I think that's a big factor. I think their size is a big factor. I think their ability to wear out teams up front is going to be a big factor. And I think Farrell's going to come out with a win in this one. Uh, yeah, I mean, as much as I like Justin Wheeler and, every, and, and the whole program up there, we had him on our show a couple times this year. But, uh, you know, Farrell looked strong. Uh, we didn't have him at the beginning. You and I battled about this all, all year we long. We did, yeah. Put him in the rankings. Don't put him in the rankings. Put him in there. But they've actually turned the corner and uh, well I guess they're, they're on their way down the highway right now they just turned the corner that's right they're on, they're on their way yeah, they're on, to they're uh, Hershey here. right now they're but, in town uh, I'm going to go Farrell I think I, I think it's going to be a little closer than what a lot of people think I can see that yeah. yeah I know earlier part of the season Farrell was sitting there 0-2 two, and two losses and uh, our good buddy Tom Weber up at Erie Times News he said I, I said listen I said, I, I'm gonna, I gotta drop them. I gotta drop them in the rankings. You know, they're 0 2. They're not looking good. He said, he said, yeah, oh no, absolutely drop them. But they're gonna be there in the end. Yeah. I says, okay, Tom. You know what I mean? You go back. This was, you know, this is late August. You know, the second week or last week in August. And uh, yeah, Tom was right as, as usual. I just think that you have two running backs that average over 10 yards a carry. So if one isn't mixing up, the next package will be pretty successful. I love the defense there, Farrell. I love the fact that they held Clareton to 10 points last yeah. week. I applaud Bishop Guilfoyle. That's a great program. Justin Wheeler does a phenomenal job, and they're so blue-collared. They don't shoot themselves in the foot. I just think ultimately the speed on the outside and that power up the middle is going to take a toll against Guilfoyle. So I'll take Farrell. Do you want to good? Yeah, I, I pretty much agree with that being, I mean, I don't think you can argue when you have both size and speed, you know, up front and on the edges. I think I think it's close, but I think Farrell ultimately pulls it out. I agree, too. Yeah, so, uh, by the way, that's the first time I've ever done a prediction. I usually don't, but uh, well, I, you're I, on the hook I now, might as well <laughs> jump in and, and start doing them right now. So uh, The man to your right understands that I do not make predictions of games that I call, and I'm going right. to give you a six of them here today. He does. That's right. I predict everything. So, I don't, all right, so there you have it. That's our uh, preview okay. That's our preview on the Farrell bishop Galefoil game. That's tomorrow. <laughs> Hershey Park, 1 o'clock, and uh, should be a great game. We hope to see a lot of fans down there. So, uh I guess we turn our attention now to the 4A game. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this one, um, if Ed over there wouldn't mind giving up his chair. Oh, I guess I could. We're going to bring in a superstar. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce oh, my bad. Brian Hollywood <laughs> to Shinsky. Hollywood, come on over here and join us at the big table, buddy. Get your athletic program the recognition it deserves and student-athletes the recognition that they need for college with Circle W Sports. Circle W Sports is a fully functional platform to run your school district's entire athletic department. Build a district-wide or team-centered website. Fully manage your schedules, rosters, and coaching staff. Track your student-athlete stats across all sports and games during their careers with our all-encompassing statistical platform. And create press about your district, teams, and student-athletes in ways that traditional media cannot do. Plus, Circle W Sports helps bring your trophy cases to life. Showcase your team's championships, college athletes, head coaches, and varsity records. Just enter your data and let the Circle W Sports platform do the rest. It's really been a one-stop shop for college coaches where they can go in there and they can find information about not only one player, but the rest of our team, guys that they might not be thought they were interested in before they went to the website. So Circle W has really done that. It links highlight films, contact information, and everything that the coach would need. From scores, stats, and standings to rosters, records, and team history, 
Circle W Sports is the online platform to thoroughly promote your school district athletic teams and student athletes. Circle W has been absolutely outstanding in doing that for our student athletes. Teams don't have to scout us because all they have to do is go to this site. Now we're having our kids being recognized, uh, not only within the state, um, outside the state, thousands of miles away. Uh, college coaches, as far as recruiting, things like that, are really recognizing our guys and what they're doing and putting our program on the map. Take it from two former Wellsboro student athletes. Growing up in a small town. It's important to get your name out there if you want to play at the next level. Circle W Sports helped me get the exposure I needed. From the creator of WellsboroAthletics.com and WellsboroFootball.com, Circle W Sports is now the official online platform for PIAA District 4 and the Northern Tier League. Contact us today at CircleWSports.com. Circle W Sports, the new name in the game for high school sports. At Game Changer Sports Ministry, we use a sports platform to teach our faith-based team values of teamwork, excellence, authority, and maturity. Each summer, we offer our Game On faith-based sports camps featuring lacrosse, softball, volleyball, cross-country, soccer, tennis, and golf. Our camps are led by top NCAA coaches and athletes. Another mission of Game Changer Sports Ministries is our student-led and student-run teams for high schools and colleges. A team is a faith-based sports club. Check out our website for more information. I would recommend becoming an official um, because you can feel like you're a part of a sport that you love. We officiate for the athletes and for the sport that we love and so as long as you keep them first then it's going to be a great experience. So the money I've made from officiating for the past few years I've put all that money in the savings to pay to finish my college education. In six months when I complete that I will not be in any debt. Officiating the state championship and getting that call to officiate the state championship was an emotional thing for me just because of what I've been through, you know, the ups and downs. And the, getting that call really meant a lot to me. Sometimes I see student athletes uh, that I officiated years and years and years ago and they say, man, you did a great job. Thanks for, thanks for everything you've done. For 20 years, The Funding Zone has been Pennsylvania's best fundraising company for high school sports programs and youth organizations. From discount cards to coupon books, tumblers, cookie dough, apparel, and online giving, there are many ways in which The Funding Zone can help your team, booster club, or organization raise money. With six full-time representatives in Pennsylvania, there are no teams too big or small. We can assist with absolutely no minimums to buy or sell, no upfront fees or costs, and zero risk to your program. For more information, call or text Mike at the number below. Whether you're at Ted's 22, Ted's in Midtown, or Ted's in Anvil, you'll be sure to have a great experience with mouth-watering food, domestic and craft beers, along with every game, you'll be sure to be satisfied. We'll see you next time at one of our three awesome locations. Now this, this is interesting because the last time I saw this gentleman, he had met Ryan Day at Hershey Park Stadium, and he was wearing his scarlet and gray, and I don't see that here tonight. Brian! I'm perplexed by this. I have, I have it out in the car. <laughs> scarlet and gray. Somebody's got to support an alma mater. I sure don't support mine. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brian, we're going to bring this up here. we got Dallas. Thomas Jefferson. I've seen Thomas Jefferson. You had the pleasure of seeing Dallas last night or last week. What were your impressions of the Dallas football team? Uh, very strong defensively. Good um, running back with uh, Lenny Kelly. I scored about, I think, completed 14, 16 passes against him. Had like 212 yards or something like that. So they're, uh, they're solid, they're experienced, they're a lot of senior senior laden team. Yeah, when you look at their lineup for uh, Dallas, I mean, senior, 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 senior. They're all seniors until you get to the bottom, and there's one sophomore, and he's the punter. I mean, this is a team that, this is one of those teams who, they, they've been building with the, for this team for four years now, and this is, they, they, all their money's on this one right here. And, uh, you know, they do a good job up there. Um, they've, this game is going to be eerily similar. I think it's 
both teams are very similar. Uh, when you look at the stats, TJ, of course, Thomas Jefferson, for those of you out there, um, 55 points. They are the leader in defensive scoring in the state of Pennsylvania. That's amazing. That's, I mean, to do that for a whole season is impressive, especially in the Whippeal. But I, I don't know that this is going to be the best game of the weekend. I think this is going to be the most interesting, though. And I think that's because you've got one side with TJ who they just – I mean, they've been talking about getting to this game since the last season ended. Oh, this, yeah. They, they were coming to this game no matter what. Come hell or high water, they were going to be playing for the state title. They've got all the all the publicity. They've got the flashy stats. They've got the good quarterback. They've got the legendary coach. They're chasing another title. I'm not going to sell Rich Maniello short just yet. I mean, this guy built a college program from the ground up. He knows what he's doing. They should probably have. I mean, I, I mean, you know that area really well. They're gonna. They should bring a pretty good crowd. Yeah. Should they I, not? I mean, especially. I, I think both you know, teams are gonna. Oh, yeah. You know, last week uh, Thomas Jefferson had a nice crowd at Hollidaysburg. Yes. I thought they had a good crowd there, and uh, they'll travel. Dallas is gonna bring the house. Good. Good. That's They're what. That's what we want. Bring the yeah. house. <laughs> Those teams up in that area in District Two traditionally travel very well. I think we're gonna see a good crowd from Southern Columbia, who's on the edge of District Two. They always travel well. We're going to see a very good crowd from Wyoming area, too. Good. Yep. Uh, they'll bring a nice crowd with them, too, for that game. But, uh, you know, Dallas, uh, like you said, Brian, they play very well. And they play tough. Well, Lenny Kelly. Lenny Kelly. Does a good job. <laughs> yeah. Solid back. Yeah. Um, what I have for Lenny Kelly, I mean, 2,623 yards and 41 touchdowns on the year. Yeah. <laughs> He's pretty good. <laughs> that's, 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 kind of like, that's kind of absurd, actually. Yeah, it's I'm absurd not, I, the, the straw that stirs that drink, though, is Starbuck, the quarterback. I yeah. mean, he is a tremendous player that gets hardly any rub because of, of everything Kelly's doing. Yeah, yeah. Kelly's, been, Kelly's right. been great. You're right. Starbuck, 1,900 yards, 1,980, 26 touchdowns. I mean, they're so close together, these teams. I mean, you look at the rushing, 4,100 yards for Dallas. There we go again. There's the rushing thing. 3,500 yards for Thomas Jefferson. For passing, 1,980 yards, 2,590 yards. So total offense is very close for both teams. For Thomas Jefferson, uh, I was pretty impressed last week when I saw them play Lampeter or Strasburg. And, boy, they were good in every phase of the game. I don't know whether it was because – Lampeter had a bad night or because TJ just looks that good, but their line was blocking well. Their running backs were moving. Uh, passing game, Shane Stump had wide receivers. Deepner was wide open twice. Um, this is going to be a great game. Dallas is a team, too, you have to automatically respect. And I go back to sort of this October, late October period when you take out Valley View and Burwick in back-to-back weeks. And those two teams are solid. They were solid programs this year, this year. And then you turn right around and you beat Valley View again yeah. in the title game for District 2. And you do it with more power and more precision. So to get better or to get over that hump, you got to automatically say that's this is a team you, that needs to be respected. And, and that was a battle yeah. up in District 2 that went on all year long between Berwick, Absolutely. Valley View, this, and Dallas. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that was a very, very tough battle all year. Berwick lost to Dallas, I think. Twice by one score, or Valley View by one score. Valley View, twice. exactly. Yep, twice. You know, yeah. and then Dallas came in and they just smacked Valley View. Yeah, you have to, you have to really, like I said, you have to really appreciate what Manella's group has done uh, to get to this point. And you know, and knocking out Jersey Shore is not, not easy. And they made they made it look easy. Number one, was trail back all that too. progression. Yeah, yeah. yeah. all that. So Kelly's been dynamic. Um, I agree with you about TJ though. Uh, just the, uh, I think at that point last week too, LS has sort of run its course. You know, they sort of ran out of steam against just sort of the giant and ET. You mentioned it earlier. This Thomas Jefferson team, everybody thought, yep. everybody thought last year was the team to get to Hershey. So you know when you get knocked out in the whip, you're ticked I, off. A lot me, of people didn't think they were going to get a lot of people thought they would get past Cathedral Prep last year, and you know, quite honestly, Cathedral Prep shocked everyone. And folks, let's, yeah, let's also remember about this game. Shocked me in that this final. This is the first I know that. time in four years that this game is not Cathedral Prep versus Imbolta. Right. So that's it's actually refreshing to see. It's nice to see. Not that I don't like those two teams, uh, but uh, I think there's there's two keys in this game. Number one. You got an old school offensive lineman in Chirpak, Bill Chirpak, and you got a guy who coached the offensive line at Kings in Maniello. So the trenches to me decide this game. 
if Dallas is going to win, they've got to own the line of scrimmage. They have a guy who can run the show that knows how to do it. And Chirpak, Bill Chirpak, obviously, everybody knows his pedigree. I mean, he was built, he was an offensive lineman. He's built his teams around offensive line. I think TJ is dangerous in this game simply because we're bringing up the prep situation. Mm -hmm. When you have a team that everybody has anointed in July, August, September as the team that's going to win it, and then they finally, they they still have to get over a hump, and they do, I, I think that makes them that much more dangerous. Like, that, that, that's... That, to me, is an understated win by them because, okay, everybody said they're going to be here. Everybody, all the stories in the preseason were about, are they, are they finally going to get back here? This is going to be their year, blah, blah, blah. They still had to get over prep. They right. still had to mentally and physically get over Erie prep. And it seemed like they did it with relative ease compared to past years. So yeah. that, to me, I mean, when, when you get that mental block out of the way, eh, the rest of it's house money, I think. I mean, yeah. that, that makes them that much more dangerous. Shane Stump's 32 to 1. That's his TD to interception margin. One. one. 32 to 1. <laughs> yeah. So not only do they have a guy like Mazzola, who's, who's, who's very strong rushing. Where did he come from? I, I, <laughs> Where I did he know. come from? He's like, all of a sudden, he's 1,600 yards. I have yards. no idea. And you've got a 1,000 yard receiver like Diebner to throw to, who's been tremendous, too. You've got all the elements on offense. But to me, still, because I respect Dallas, I think TJ needs to get out in a hurry. In this game, if I you buy give that, Dallas yeah. yep. any kind of hope what? in this game, because they're going to want to rush the ball, because they're going to want to, you know, they're going to want to play their game and not not exit their scheme. Um, they're really not designed to exit their scheme and, and play from behind. But uh, if you if TJ can get out in front of this game, then they'll be all right. But man, if you leave if you leave Dallas with a little a little bit of hope, even by halftime, this is going to be a four quarter struggle for them. It is, so, it is, and I think so. And yeah. you know, Brian, what you saw. Defensively for Dallas, uh, talk about that defensive side. Yeah, their linebackers are stout. That they have, they're really they uh, they pursue the ball very well. Um, the way they shut down Imhotep, Imhotep tried to run wide on them, and they chased it down, made the tackles, you know, one on one, you know, and uh, they were just outstanding in that game. Taylor Belesta, he, he, he's he's lights out for Dallas, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, to to shut down an Imhotep team, that that's saying something because. Their losses, Imhotep's losses, people don't realize, you know, came to some very large teams like St. Joe's. Type absolutely, teams. yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Dallas is a real deal, and, and I think this is going to be a great game. I think it's going to be a very good game, too. Uh, and you, like you said, coming off Valley View and then Imhotep, two vastly different offenses to stop. Yeah. And now Imhotep would put up some points, but you would expect that. Uh, and then to shoot right back and take out Jersey Shore. So, yeah, you have to respect Dallas. Uh, I think it's going to be a whale of a ball game. I think each of you opened the segment saying I hope so. this could be the yeah. most interesting. I agree I think with you. So. I, I, I hope so, and I certainly hope that win or lose, I said this on Epps' show the other night, I think we know who's going to have the best postgame uh, <laughs> yes. presser after, this, yes. after any of these title games. It's going to be Manny Yellow. <laughs> the roster comment's going to come back up, I think. That, yeah, that I was. Agree. That, that, that was, was the uh, greatest mic drop of all time I mean, in PA high school football. How, how can you not say that was one of the best lines ever? I mean, just the way he did. Now, you could take it two ways. I think a lot of, of us you know could. what he meant. <laughs> but the, you know, yeah, we you know what could he say you know, whatever you want to say about it, but it was the best line I heard in a long he time. Just, and he walked off after he said it, too. It wasn't even like he stood there and made another point. He's like, we played a roster. Gone. <laughs> yeah, just, just gone. It was great. <laughs> out of here. I'm gone. <laughs> Hey, listen, I, my last thing before we get out of this game, Hershey obviously needs to make money on, on these games. I get that. So if they're not selling pierogies when Dallas coming to town, <laughs> they are just not thinkers yeah. that I thought they were. I'm just yeah. telling you. I'm telling you. I think Fire it right. up. I think you're right, Eric. All right, so, uh, Brian, I'm going to let you go first with the predictions. And uh, what, what, do you, what do you think on this game? I had Thomas Jefferson 38-31. He's going to throw a score out there. I'll throw that's a score. Nice. I'll, show, I'll, all I'll right. show a score. He's all in. Yeah, see, He's all in. See, that's the savvy. <laughs> that's the savvy. Hollywood. Player. Hollywood see? just went all in on the game prediction. He was like. That's, I got it. That's right why here. he's Hollywood. He just yeah. he doesn't care. He's throwing out a number. I just I want to know what Brian's minds because you're not going to get an Ohio State guy here this year. They, they're they're busy. They're busy on Saturday night. They already got the sideline. Yeah, they already got your. They already, they already, there's no reason. Hey, I bet you the Penn State coaches will be there. He will. He's going to be here yeah, Saturday night. I'm sure. I'm They'll sure. Be there Saturday night. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday nights. You can yeah, hang out in Franklin. Yeah. Wear your red coat. He made me take it off two years ago. So he did. 
Saturday night's the word that he'll be here for the 6A game, yeah, and that's yeah, the only one that he's coming yeah. for. Yeah, we look forward to that. Eric, what do you think? I like Te- I like Thomas Jefferson. I thought uh, I-, I moved them in the rankings early, uh, about week six. I thought they were looked to be uh, angling for this for this chance. They got it now. I think they're going to take out Dallas. Uh, TJ just seems like they've been on this this team of destiny thing, and the weird part about it is I know it's destiny. You can't control it. They seem like they have. And they got a grip on this. They know what they're here to do. I think it's going to be a, a great game. I think it's the most intriguing game. I, I'm going to stick somewhere in the same range that Brian said. I mean, I think it's going to be a tight game. TJ's going to pull it out in the end, though. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the thing about Dallas is a lot, of, a lot of their games this year, they had a turnover at some point in the game, and they are able to overcome that. They do that against this team. I don't know if they're going to. And, and would score, like, right after the turnover. Like, they did that against yeah. Jersey yeah, Shore. Right. They had a big touchdown yeah. after they were trailing by yeah. one. So that's. That's, That's going to be key. a key. Uh, for me, uh, you know, I saw TJ play last week, and I mean, the only thing I know about Dallas is I've watched him on film, and uh, from what Brian told me, so I'm going to go TJ too, but I think it's going to be under seven points. I think it's going to be a close game. Um, At least taking the hook. I think we're all in the same. Yeah. <laughs> I think well, we're all in the same like, neighborhood. I wanted to go tie, but we don't do that anymore. We don't, we don't do ties. <laughs> I wanted to do tie. It's been a while since we had a tie. But, you know, but uh, so there you have it, folks. That's our, our 4A recap. That game is tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, Hurst Park Stadium. It's going to be a big game. There should be a huge crowd there tonight, tomorrow night. Should be night, good, yep. And I'm really excited for it. So uh, that's it for, for this segment. Uh, we're going to run off to some commercials and – pay some bills and pay for the food that we're feeding everybody with and uh we'll be back to talk about friday's games guys get your athletic program the recognition it deserves and student athletes the recognition that they need for college with Circle W Sports. Circle W Sports is a fully functional platform to run your school district's entire athletic department. Build a district-wide or team-centered website. Fully manage your schedules, rosters, and coaching staff. Track your student athlete stats across all sports and games during their careers with our all-encompassing statistical platform and create press about your district, teams, and student athletes in ways that traditional media cannot do. Plus, Circle W Sports helps bring your trophy cases to life. Showcase your team's championships, college athletes, head coaches, and varsity records. Just enter your data and let the Circle W Sports platform do the rest. It's really been a one-stop shop for college coaches where they can go in there and they can find information about not only one player, but the rest of our team, guys that they might not be thought they were interested in before they went to the website. So Circle W has really done that. It's linked highlight films, contact information, and everything that the coach would need. From scores, stats, and standings to rosters, records, and team history, Circle W Sports is the online platform to thoroughly promote your school district's athletic teams and student athletes. Circle W has been absolutely outstanding in doing that for our student athletes. Teams don't have to scout us because all they have to do is go to the site. Now we're having our kids being recognized uh, not only within the state, um, outside the state, thousands of miles away. Uh, college coaches as far as recruiting, things like that, are really recognizing our guys and what they're doing and putting our program on the map. Take it from two former Wellsboro student athletes. Growing up in a small town. It's important to get your name out there if you want to play at the next level. Circle W Sports helped me get the exposure I needed. From the creator of WellsboroAthletics.com and WellsboroFootball.com, Circle W Sports is now the official online platform for PIAA District 4 and the Northern Tier League. Contact us today at CircleWSports.com. Circle W Sports, the new name in the game for high school sports. At Lazar Lumber, we have it all. Many brands of kitchen cabinetry, countertops, vanities of all types and sizes, and easy access showers. We have windows from brands you know, like Anderson and Marvin, interior and exterior doors, many styles and colors of decking and railing, plus railing accents, and all your construction needs for building, roofing, and siding. For your next building project, visit lazarlumber.com quality you can build on. 
At Game Changer Sports Ministry, we use a sports platform to teach our faith-based team values of teamwork, excellence, authority, and maturity. Each summer, we offer our Game On faith-based sports camps featuring lacrosse, softball, volleyball, cross-country, soccer, tennis, and golf. Our camps are led by top NCAA coaches and athletes. Another mission of Game Changer Sports Ministries is our student-led and student-run teams for high schools and colleges. A team is a faith-based sports club. Check out our website for more information. All right. Well, here we are back again. Uh, guys, uh, talking about championship football. Friday afternoon, we get to see one of the most prolific football teams in the history of high school football in Pennsylvania. I'm, I'm just not sure they're that good. I'm not sure <laughs> that they're, yet, they're quite there yet. You know? One guy away. One, one, they one could really use away, a wide receiver, right? you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they could use a few more. What do you? What, they need. They need I was say, they need a punter. No, they got a punter. Yeah, yeah. His name's <laughs> Julian Fleming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Friday at one o'clock, we have Southern Columbia against a new team in, in Hershey. Mm -hmm. Avon. Avon. Who wants to say it? But Avon. Avon needs oh, to do it. Oh, it's the antelopes. Yeah. Yep. The antelopes. How do you not love saying antelopes? <laughs> yeah. That's great. I mean, it's great. Listen, they, they're another team that comes into this game saying that they left some stuff on the table last year. And they were really close to that Whippeal championship. They lost the last three games of the season last year. This this game, Epp and I talked about this on, on Monday night. This, this, to me, is all about how many punches Avonworth can take early on because I think Jim Roth is cutting the strings and he's letting these guys go out in style if they can. I think they're 50 points away from breaking the state record for points in a season yep. again. Uh, so, you know, that's going to be in their sights. Fleming did not have a great state final last year, so I think he wants to put on a show. Uh, obviously, the Garcia brothers are, are fantastic, but this, this to me is all about how many punches they can take early. Wilmington a season ago was in that game at the half, and then it kind of gets away from them a little bit, you know, midway through the third quarter. So it's, it's all about what Avonworth can, can take on early in this game, and if it's a lot and they're still standing, more power to them. If, but... I don't know. This, How this do you is... stop a team? Where's my sheet at? And uh, you've got uh, pick, it. Pick a number. I mean, it's just. It, well, you, it, it, he's got the good one though, because even I, I, I poured through three hundred pages of stuff. Can I give that to you today? <laughs> and I can't even. I just scribbled it on a little notebook. Just a little pad. I, just one word I, I, I can't, can't even. All right, I'm gonna read you one. Yeah. I'm gonna read you one, one, one thing. This here, is Eric. unfathomable. I don't know if you're aware of this. Gage Garcia, 8,000 rushing yards, and Julian Fleming, 5,000 receiving yards, are the first set of teammates in United States history to reach those career numbers together on wow. one team. <laughs> <laughs> who, who looked this up? That's what I want to know. <laughs> that, that stat right there, ladies and gentlemen, is courtesy of Black Diamond Sports Network, Dave Fagley, who covers Southern Columbia. Uh, he works in Southern Columbia. He knows all the numbers. And... Ladies and gentlemen, this page is full of this right here. This is records. These are records set by Southern Columbia. A whole page. I mean, I'm sorry to sound a little excited. It might be because I'm from Berwick, which, you know, so I'm going to claim them as my, because that's what you do now. You yeah, claim. it's all right. You're, you're close it's enough. Mine. You're close enough. You know? Like, but, we uh, can't claim them. I mean, just 18 times to the state championship game. Right. Nine titles. State record for PATs in a season. Thirty-one, uh, to, right? Thirty-one Division One recruits. Yeah. Right, at least. Yeah, and uh, you know most of them are going. They're for going college and going straight to the Eagles because they need help right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're all going to Big Ten program except Max Tillett. I mean, he's going to go and turn New Hampshire around. So yes, yeah. yes. Cal Holiday, all-time leader in tackles. Max Tillett, he's got the second all-time in, in their school history. I mean. It's just, it's amazing. Ten opponents, shutouts. They, they switched their schedule up to play bigger schools to make themselves look tougher. I mean. Well, they played the South Carolina team who actually two weeks ago won a state title. Yep. The team that they yep. embarrassed on the ESPN 36 uh, nothing in the beginning of the year. Uh, and they changed up to play Wyoming area uh, late in the season to give themselves a little bit more competition. Uh, that didn't stop them from mercy rolling uh, everybody in their path. Um, I, I don't know. I think. 
Well, yeah, so it was 36 nothing. so they even mercy ruled the set mm-hmm. South Carolina. They did, yep. Then they so, came up here, uh, and, and, and they decided to change things up. And yeah, I mean, I think... The Wyoming area is in the state title game? Yes, yes. We are we are seeing a team that is perhaps the greatest, the greatest display of overall talent that we've seen. Now, I know we've seen some abundance of talent, St. Joe's preps, the Archbishop Woods, you know, a lot of these teams have played unbelievable talent teams. But at a small school, like a 2A, it's, it's been unbelievable to watch this team progress. And if they win this game, and they're heavily favored to do so, this senior class would be 63-1. and 63-1. and one. It's ridiculous. Um, you know, the, the, what, what the numbers just that? keep going. They're what, nothing what, compared. Yeah. I mean, they lost in the championship game in 2016 or 2015. Yeah. No. Steel Valley, 16. The 2016. Yeah, 16. Right, to Steel Valley. And they were housed in that game. Gage Garcia, the running backs, the only game he missed in his entire career was that game. Yes. So, and in that said, they're going to be 63-1 and one if they manage to take out Adam Worth, uh, who's a worthy opponent, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But you just, you feel like you're just, you, you feel like you're fighting a machine is what it is. It's going to be tough. I mean, it, you look at all these teams. Got, now, I think it's going to be a little closer for a while than, than some people might think it is because just because Avonworth has some spot size, they've got some speed and mm-hmm. athleticism in Jackson Miller. Um, so I think you're, they're going to hang, but you can only hang so long. And I'm sorry, Avonworth fans. I mean, you know, I don't mean to do this, but your backs are against the wall. You're keeping it 100. Your, your hands yeah. are in your pocket and your gun's That's, unloaded. Yeah, I mean, there's tremendous football players. Like, you mentioned a few on Avonworth team. And, you know, you don't you don't just glide through single A in the whip yield, no. or, or double A in the whip yield. No, you don't. You don't, you don't do you that. You Washington uh, you out know. there. This year you had West Green or, you know, you had yeah. some tough teams rolling you're out, 50, out there. You're 15-0 and 0 for a reason. you got yeah. a heck of a program. Uh, it's just that additional heck of a programs have, have gone up against Southern Columbia and just the overall depth and the overall skill set of these guys is tremendous and it's all homegrown talent that's the biggest misconception from outside Catawissa is oh these guys pull everybody from area and they recruit I'm from Berwick <clears throat> these guys basically when they're one years old they have their birthday party and then they go go into the football program <laughs> yeah. that's basically how it works one years old you get a party, a gift, then you go play football. And, and then you if, you, if you talk to, you know, people online, well, you know, these kids, they, they stayed back in fifth grade, and you know, yeah, right. they they lived in this town, and they lived, in, and then they moved over there, and you know, it's just it's not true. I know these people personally. You know, I know the coaching staff. I know a lot of these people down there, and it, it just being from Berwick, it's what comes along with a winner. We heard all the time. Yeah. You recruit. You recruit. You recruit. I coached all those kids in midget football. You know, Ron, somebody told me one day they heard Ronnie Paulus was from New Jersey. I said, well, that was a heck of a commute to play for the Nesca Beck Raiders because, you know, his, his father must have been very dedicated. But, you know, that's what happens when, you, when you're winning programs. You know, yeah, Nesca Beck the Raiders are a good program, Any other too. year, <laughs> Avonworth has a great shot at a state title. Any yeah. other yeah. year. Yep. But, well, except – for last year, the last, year before, last yeah, four yeah, years. yeah, yeah. <laughs> going yeah. forward, any other years. right? Yeah. And it's it's funny because like I remember I covered Southern for two years, and the second year I was there, Hanoski Henry Hanoski who's now the coach at Shemokin, Josh Marks both played there. I think they were two of the first Division One recruits the program had. Yep. And it was like, oh my God, they got these guys that are going to Penn State and Pitt, and you know, Hino now got a Super Bowl ring with the Giants and all that. They were a big deal. Yep. And now you got Nick Saban getting police escorts over to the school and Dabo Sweeney landing helicopters. Like, you know, yeah, exactly. Like, it's crazy. And to, to Billy's point, everybody who, who says, well, where, where, did, where did Julian Fleming come from? His dad, or his, his grandfather was a girls' basketball coach at Southern Columbia for decades. Right. Like, it wasn't like they all no, of a sudden no, no, just no, 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 no. showed He's up. from Mars. Exactly, right. Yeah, he came from, from Mars. That's he may be from Mars. He may be from Mars. He able to leap. Yeah, Nick yeah. might be yeah. from Mars. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So... You're not I mean, supposed to have a 52-inch vertical leap. and. <laughs> just, I mean, they, they only had a nursery named after the family right. four miles from the school. Right. But, yeah, let's talk about where the kid came yeah, from. Yeah, like I said, I mean, they, come on. Know, people have this, this great misconception that because they're, they're a winning program, they recruit. Right. Yeah. Not everybody that, that wins recruits. I've never I mean, had no. anyone tell me Jim Roth knocked on their door and said, come to Southern Columbia and play football for me. Jim Roth had to work his tail off to get to the program 
to where it is now. They almost I mean, the head work is tail yeah. off. Remember yeah. when he first Phil, took over? Phil yeah, Myers, yeah. Uh, it was a 10 year process, almost, yeah. maybe one even one more. One of our reporters yeah. did a great story and in, in interviewed Jim Roth, and they, they talked about the history of the program. They were literally 15 minutes away from shutting that program down. Yep. And somebody said, now nah, let's give it a shot. They won a game, their first game in three years, and they closed the school. <laughs> and then the next year, Jim Roth took over, and here we are talking like a bunch of fools drooling over a team that yeah. is a 2A team that could probably <laughs> compete in 5A. You know, it just and beyond the, beyond the uh, you know the five Division One recruits that they have right now who are committed, or you know, there's so much more talent. I mean, we. It's almost like we don't talk about Gavin Garcia, who's been, the last four or five weeks, he's been phenomenal, you know, rushing the football. I mean, you almost forget about Gage. The, the, you, you almost forget about the Michigan recruit. You know, how does that happen? And it only happens when you just have an unbelievable special group that even Coach Roth has to kind of sit, sit back and go, yeah, these, these guys are special. They were putting kids that played quarterback at Bloomsburg, Lock Haven, other schools like that. The last two have walked on in Alabama and are going to Wisconsin. You're right. That's pretty yeah. good. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. All right, guys. Uh, you know, and I'm. I, Avonworth has some great, great players, and you know, one of the things I do want to talk about real quick is uh, they're without a player this right now, Cairo Stork, mm-hmm. because of the transfer rule, and uh, I don't. I don't want to spend too much time on the transfer rules, but. I think they're working this year, and they're, they're doing what they should do. And I think that's, you know, I think right now we're seeing the result of that just starting. Just starting. That almost got ugly, though. His situation almost got ugly because yeah. the family pulled the court case back right before the Whippeo final, yeah, I think yeah, it was. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, they that had potential to, to kind of go a little further than what some of the ones that we've seen. But, I mean, if, if the rules put in place, we, we had a situation – at Harrisburg in this in this area this year with Nakari Williams when he transferred over. Right. I mean, we weren't even sure what his status was for the playoffs. Yep. And then they, they ended up getting a hardship for him, which they should have, but, you know, to begin with. But, you know, there's, it, it's, a, it's a little whack. I don't know that we've seen somebody push it as far as the Thorpe family was about to do that, though, right before the Whippeal final. That had potential to get really ugly. Yeah. And that's, you know, and, and I'm a big proponent for the not, – not proponent, but – I defend the PIAA, and people come at me for it because they have to make some really freaking tough decisions. And a lot of people don't understand, well, they can just pass, they can just pass a rule. Well, you can't just pass a rule because they know what their lawyer bills look like. Yeah. And in that, what you're talking about, Eric, is, is a perfect example of what we're trying to say is, and you can't just pass a rule to say this, this can happen because somebody's going to grab a lawyer and it's going to get pushed at some point in the next two or three years. I mean, they're, they're going to have to do something to, to, uh, um, I don't know, I don't want to say like change it, but you know, kind of amend it, sort of. But somebody is going to. There's, there's going to be a high profile case coming. I don't know where or who. I mean, I would assume maybe it'll be like a Newman Gretti or something like that. But for basketball, but there's going to be a situation where somebody is going to push this thing to the max. And it's going to get ugly, and we might be in a situation where we're back at square one and have to do something all over again, which is going to prove nothing. But I, I, I don't know what the I don't know what the answer to it is. I really don't know what the answer to it is. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know the, the the rule really was put in place. Uh, you know, when the PIW adopts a rule, it has to adopt it for everybody. And you were getting these sort of loose transfers, predominantly in the Philadelphia area, and that's just how it was because the Philadelphia schools are on one big blanket, yeah, under one big umbrella. You know, and, and guys would slide, and, and that was really the biggest complaint. And there's some other pockets in the state, too. So when you put in a rule like that, everybody has to follow. You're going to get decisions at these places you normally wouldn't have an issue with. The District 2s or the District, you know, in pockets of 3, well, the whole thing, of 4, 5, 6. It blew up a whole rivalry in Berks County. Yes, you know, exactly. With why missing in, in Berks. I mean, we, yep. heard, we read all that over the, over the course of the season with – you know, too many guys are leaving here and going there, and we don't want to play them anymore because yeah. they're moving up. And yeah. yeah, you know, now that's see the move up is what I want to see. I want to see how the competitive formula works when they have to start moving these teams up the, yeah. the classification. What do you, what do, you do? Right. Southern will be one of them probably. What do you, but you know, maybe a Farrell. We already prep. said Cathedral Prep probably is going to be one. Yep. Um, I, but what do you do with like St. Joe's Prep? You can't move them anywhere else. Yeah, you can't go. There from has to be. You know, they're bringing kids in from. There has to be a camp. Yeah. There has to be yeah. a ceiling somewhere, you know. Well, yeah. you're a 6A. Yeah. You're a 6A school. you got enough guys. 
You know. Yeah, but they, you know, but again, and I'm cool. not, I'm not saying that they, that they. I, I really enjoy watching that program. I think they're a phenomenal program, and the way they run that thing yeah. is, is second to none in this entire state. But when you look at their busing map and you see that they're going 30 miles into Jersey. Right. I mean, yeah. what is that? Like, I, yeah. there's something somewhere along the line's got to be. And I'm not saying that they get any players from no, that but bus route. But the, you know, the, what you're saying is right. the competition formula right. it's not really, it doesn't apply to that. Right. No, it there's doesn't. nowhere to move up. It doesn't. It so doesn't. They, they're going to have to look at a different way to, what do you say, punish or, or no, it's help just, stop you know, that? It, it, listen, because I agree. Listen, listen, the new rules have curtailed transfers. Yes. It yeah. has. We, we've seen that. Yeah. You know, and there, there hasn't really been a lot of hardships that have taken over. It's been more of denied guys denied playing in the postseason because they transferred after a certain date right. in their in their high school career. But the fact that other pockets have been affected by that is now ticking people off that maybe the others from the outside wanted the rule being applied to a certain area. So they only wanted to, to rabbit it it down that hole but they didn't want the rabbit coming down exactly. that hole. Yes. Yeah. And that's and that's a frustrating process yeah. for the guys for the places that don't normally have to deal with it. I mean, I, I, I try to be honest as, as I can. And uh, You? Yeah. No. I'm very, yeah, I'm very honest. <laughs> okay. Because I'm honest doesn't mean you have to agree with All me. Right. But, you know, with this new rule, we're getting way off track here, guys. But with this new rule, I think we're starting to see some people back up and go, wait a minute. This affects us, too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. You write the rule one for all. Exactly. You know. All of a sudden, now we don't want we don't want rules all encompassing now. So let guys, let's let the rules play out for a year or two, and let's see what happens. Guys, help yourself, man. Grab some food. Courtesy PAFootballNews.com, man. He's got a mid pen championship shirt on. He can do whatever he wants. He runs this town tonight. All right. We get a pine tree on this guy over here. That's right, man. All right, one guys. of Central Dolphins starting linebackers. Listen, right if there, you by the say way. the word antelopes, it all comes right back to football. So let's just <laughs> let's just go. We call, we, you stick it. around. We're going to get you on the air. Okay? We're, we're going lopes. All we're right. going to call them lopes. Hey, listen, tomorrow. guys, let's go real quick. <laughs> Do you really need to ask? I mean, Southern Columbia is going to win this thing. I think it's going to be a mercy Southern rule. Bank. Yeah, Southern. Southern. Yeah. Right. Okay, there you got it, guys. Uh, Southern Columbia across the board. Avonworth, I'm sorry, Coach John Kerr, Duke, man, sorry about that. But uh, you know, let's move on to the five A game and. Uh, New blood, old blood. Archbishop Wood has been here, what, like a hundred times? He's been like here a lot, yeah. And uh, Cheltenham has been here exactly zero times. Wasn't Chel? I'm just throwing this out. Wasn't there an, a Cheltenham Academy that was like, um, was like deemed the champion like 1930? Way back, and I have yeah. a story coming up. Yeah, written by Hal Wilson. Oh, did, I, did I blow I that story? I didn't want to. Good job. Good job. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah. You tell me. We've been writing a story on PAFootballNews.com, <laughs> and uh, it's PA's greatest teams by Hal Wilson, who is an 89-year-old gentleman that knows everything there is to know about football. I'm not going to run it for another two months now, so we'll put that you in the closet. You set me up with him a couple weeks ago. You set me up with him a couple weeks ago. Did you get to talk to him? I, I, I did, and when I was talking to him, I'm like, I don't even need to tell this guy anything. He already knows everything. Like, what you am gotta, I, what am I talking about? I just I gave him two bad. numbers. I had the most. He's got to be I sat and talked to that guy for four and a half hours with stories that went like. That guy bless so you, man. So back in 1937, Berwick. Oof. had a linebacker by the name of Joe Cologne, and they were playing Plymouth. It was the third game of the season. It was 64 degrees outside. He lined up in the middle linebacker slot, and the running back went to, and four hours of stories like that. How do you have I don't even remember what I covered last week. I don't remember what I did like five hours ago. Got, and this guy's 89, it. but he was amazing. But anyway, Archbishop Wood, <laughs> I got to see them last week, and uh, I was impressed by Cardell Pickford. Uh, great, great, great running back. Uh, does a good job. Or he's a wide, wide out. I'm sorry, wide out. Their quarterback Max Keller does a nice job. They are not the solid Archbishop Wood team that we've seen in the past. They were vulnerable. Uh, I say if Gateway doesn't put that ball on the ground eight times and lose six of them, we might be seeing Gateway versus Sheltonham here instead of Archbishop Wood. I think we probably would be seeing Gateway too, especially if Derek Davis had played. I exactly. Mean, you know, the yep. the yes. running back for Gateway was not, you know, their star running back did not play in that football game. Uh, you mentioned the, the high uh, turnover rate, uh, the six fumbles Very that high. they lost. 
Uh, I, I think it's actually four they lost. I think they had six fumbles and lost four or something like that. Uh, and a couple of TDs that were called back, big plays that were called back uh, for penalties. So, uh, yeah, but you know what? Archbishop Wood, I think the, the championship sort of pedigree is what kind of gets them through in those situations. They win they, a game before they get on the field. They find a way to win even when they're not at their yeah. best. I and agree. I think, now, you could argue Gateway took them out of that sort of mode last week, and I would agree with that. But again, championship teams find a way. And they, they found a way to and win. They, and they've and been here for a I, long time. And it was a I great game. Is, yeah, absolutely. It was a great game. This, is, I think, is the best game of the, the whole weekend. I, I think this yeah, is going to be a good is, game. You um, have, I mean, Shelton Ham with all the history, most wins in school history, second quarterback ever to throw for 2,000 yards in school history. They've been playing football since 1901. They've got one famous alum, Reggie Jackson, Mr. October. Who was 5'9". And, and exactly. Was when he was at and, and he didn't back. get in the playoffs these when he played football. This, they, these two schools are this far apart. Yep. Yes. yes. Ten yes. miles. Yeah. So, that, that's so you're saying cool. it's not really an east-west I think you might actually – no, it's not east-west. <laughs> well, actually, one of them is further west than the other. It's, all right. It's a corner it. battle. So, They're battling for corners. This yeah, is what so, this is yeah, going to be. So, yeah. So, I mean, showing him Adonis Hunter, what, he's, a, he's a great quarterback. Oh, fantastic. Uh, yep. Very Cordell Stewart-like from what I saw in film That's a good today. comparison. I like that um, comparison. I, I think, you know, he runs the ball well. He hides the ball well. He runs a good counter. And, I, uh I talked to, to Kyle Atkins earlier today, and I, th- I asked him an interesting question. I said, what do you like better? Do you like getting there as a player or a coach better? Remember, he was on that team at 11 yeah. that just dismantled Bishop McDevitt mm-hmm. in front of Urban Meyer and everybody else. He was an assistant on 16 and 17, and now he's the head coach, and he was one win away from getting here last year. Right. This guy knows what he's doing with this program, but I, it, it's to Ab's credit. I mean, he, he kind of feels the same way that I do about this team. They're not the... the 13 Division One guys like that in 2011. I mean, that, that even the the next year or the two years later when they played McDevitt again. I mean that, that team was still yeah, not yeah. on pace with 11, but they had a lot of good talent on that team. He just figures out a way to get these things done. I mean they, they had a, a big run on third down to set up the field goal last week. The quarterback, you know, their defense solid, timely turnovers. I mean they they have a bunch of guys in this team that didn't play a whole lot last year, but played enough to have enough experience. I mean, he literally, I think, only has one guy that started on last year's team, Ryan DeVirgilius. He yeah. replaced 29 seniors, yeah. and they might be better this year with all these younger guys that are back here. This it, Kyle Atkins, it, I understand it's wood. People need to start noticing the guy, the job that this guy is doing because he's going to be he's going to be going up the ladder pretty quick. He's yeah. only starting a few seniors, too, this year. Yep. So, you know, th- that's impressive, too. I mean, Shane Collier... Great, great fullback. He's strong. He's powerful. Uh, did a nice job for Archbishop Wood. And their athletes are very good athletes. They're, they're, they're very athletic. They're, they're not big. They're not bulky, but they're fast. They're very fast, they're yeah. very quick. Yeah. Yeah. They're not a typical Archbishop Wood team that we've seen where they just line up and they're bigger than you and they're stronger he than took you. Them, he took quick. them to Altoona last week. On, on Thanksgiving night, by the way, they traveled up there yeah. to stay overnight on Thanksgiving night. He said logistically it was a complete nightmare for us to, to have this game on Friday afternoon. It's a four-hour ride. We didn't want him on a, on a bus, like, you know, and have to stop and feed him and everything like that. I mean, he he literally has thought, like, all this out. Now, the other interesting thing about their team that I love is they got Dave Armstrong on the staff, the former fullback at CB West. Uh-huh. First time he was back at Mansion Park since they won the state title against Upper St. Clair there his senior year was last Friday when they played game. Wow. And he... he Kyle Atkins told me that he just kind of like they didn't really think about the about going there and like being there for the first time and everything. But I mean, he had everything mapped out logistically. They played a solid game. You know, obviously it comes down to the end of it. But they they are there's two teams that are here this weekend that just have figured out ways to kind of they're like an amoeba. Like they just change their their size right. or whatever throughout the whole game. One of them's Wood, the other centered off. And I think, I think Wood's in a good position in this game on Friday night. Yeah. I do too. Uh, I think I think they are. Uh, Shelton him, of course, you know, Jameer Barnes, the running back, he's very fast uh, running back, gets the yards he needs. Latif T.J. Harris. T.J. Harris is a very good wide out, and he's a, he's one of uh, Hunter's top targets. They're not huge on the line, but I think they're big enough. Uh, Joe Thomas, 320 pounds, he's a big boy on the line, and he does move some people. Uh, we watched film earlier today. He does move some people, so... And they're good run stoppers, John. They're, they're good at stopping the run. To me, the guy that really needs to, needs to kind of show you're going to need to get him the ball is Nate Edwards. Uh, he, you know, he's a yeah. guy who's 
spectacular kickoff return guy. Oh yeah, I think he's got Amazing. four special teams touchdowns, yeah. like two two pick sixes as well. Uh, he's a guy, an athlete that can give Woods some fits in this game. Uh, I go back to what At said about just the sort of the fluid action of of Archbishop Wood. You know what I mean? And even when things aren't going great, they just sort of find a way to progress and keep moving forward. Uh, last week was a perfect example of that against Gateway. They kept knocking and knocking, and even though Gateway was trying to give it to them, it was hard sledding. It was hard sledding, and they found a way. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad to see Wood back because it, it, there was, I think there was, from the outside, you always, you know, you always go into a, into a season thinking, okay, St. Joe's Prep's going to be stacked. Archbishop Wood's going to be stacked. Just certain teams in each classification, you know, are going to be rebuilding and, right. and strong and good to go. Wood's one of those programs. So I think there was general concern when they lost to Roman. And now, don't get me wrong, Roman's a quality program, and they got tremendous athletes. But I think being a 3-2, and two, you lose to Roman, and in, in two weeks you got to play St. Joe's Prep. You know, you're looking at, okay, we need to write this ship in a hurry. And and, and they did. They've done they that. They did. They've I know. That. I know Twitter, like, exploded that night they lost. I mean, yeah, I mean it, was it, was, like, it was just like, well, it was oh, my God, game. Archbishop Wood just lost to Roman. You know, not, yeah. not that Roman's a bad team. They're no, a decent by team. No stretch. But right. nobody expected Archbishop Wood to lose to Roman, and right. boom. And then you, you got to come out. And when you're a coach, you got to find a way to say to your kids, hey, yep. guys, let's go round it up. You know, let's go. We, we can do this again. They brought it together. They, they got to Altoona. They got through the mess that they went through. I know I talked to Kyle that day, and uh, it was just – it was a good game. And a hell of a ball game. It was a hell – yeah, you're yep. right. It was a great fight. A great ball game. A lot of athletes on the field. I mean, there were, what, I think five of the top 100 ESPN players on the field that day, something like that. There was a, there was a lot of the top Sounds about right. Yeah. 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 yeah, he – and Kyle Atkins' ability to relate to his team, I mean, don't forget he's only 25 years old. I mean, yeah. this is yeah. – he was handed the keys to a, a, a million-dollar car when Steve Devlin went to – or sinus. So, I mean, it's his ability to relate to those guys because of his age, I think, helps too. I mean, he's not that far removed from, from oh, winning, a state, cha- yeah, winning right. a state championship, too. So, uh, but his, I'm just, you, you can see, I, I think he's at some point going to be able to just name wherever he wants to go. Like, I think he has, like, that pedigree as a coach to look what he's doing with, like, less talent than what he played with. Right, you know he's he's getting it to a point where it's competing for state championships year after year in his first two years. Now, on the other side, Ryan Nace. I mean, look at what that two and eight. He's done. Yeah. His mm-hmm. first year two and eight. They go eight and four last year. Now all of a sudden they got fourteen wins and they're in the state mm-hmm. championship. I this this game to me is just up and down the chart fascinating. I this I think hands down top to bottom. However you look at it, offense, defense, coach, whatever. This is the best game of the whole weekend right here. I think so too. I do. Uh, very comparable. Very comparable. They're athletic. Both teams are athletic. It, it, this might be, oh. you're right, this might be one of the best games and of the of Don't the forget the, the ties. I mean, we got players that used to play at Wood. We've got, I mean, Ryan Nace's, I think, wife went to Archbishop yes. Wood. You know, there's all these, like, Family. parallels between these two sides. Like, the brother, where, the brother oh. they have a brother-in-law that went yep. to Wood. Ryan Nace's best friend is the girls' basketball coach, Mike McDonald at Archbishop Wood. I mean, there's all kinds of... Half the crowd um, we see that, but they might be families battling with each other. It, it very well. I, listen, I just hope Reggie Jackson shows up. That's that's what That'd I want. That'd be fabulous. I want Mr. October. That'd be great. I, I really want Mr. October. I, mean, I, I just want to hear, you know, I I hear somebody on one side of the bleachers say, Oh, your mother's a donkey. And the other one say, She's your monkey. She's your daughter. Exactly. Too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it could be families yelling is, at each other across the bleachers, you know? <laughs> This is be, your mom too. This is going to be fascinating. I mean, I really and listen, Sheltonham's going to want to make it a track meet, and I'm not so sure that they're going to be able to do that the whole way. I think they might hit chunk plays here and there, but I, I just something about that Wood team that they just figure out a way to. Yeah. Man, let's figure out a way to beat Penn Hills last year. Did, were they? Did they have any business being in that game last year no. with the superior talent that Penn no. Hills had? Penn Absolutely Hills, yeah. not. And they were in that thing until the very end of You're it. Right. So. Good right. point. Good you point. know, the one thing you know we're overlooking is. What about the game last week Cheltenham was in? Holy yeah, I mean, come I mean, You want to talk about it. They can score points in a yeah. hurry. Yeah. Obviously. Uh, it, evidently. So, <laughs> they did I not mean, slow down the Cocalco. No. So that's a little bit of give, concern. They gave up points. Yeah. Now, so, now to, to be fair, Noah Palm was really good. You know? 
He's that kind of guy who can run. You know, he's one of the best players I saw. Ron Zahn was a great. I mean, there's some great athletes in Chicago. They had a tremendous season. No, no, so, Noel Palm is definitely one of the best players I've seen all year. I think. I think you and I saw him together in yeah. one time. And uh, well, we I mean, saw him had, at Cedar Cliff. He had like, he had like a 90-yard fumble return. Yep. He had a 70-yard run. Yeah. He had a 60-yard touchdown pass. I mean, the guy, he just did it all that day. For me, I think E.T. and I talked about this on Monday as far as start to finish for a career and what that kid did for that program. He's up there in the top five or six guys that I've seen in the last 10 years. He's right up there with the Penn yeah. Debris. Uh, Susquehanna Township, I think Jalen Fitzpatrick, and you know guys like that, Kane Everson for CD, well CDs then slash Harrisburg, um, you know those guys. What? He almost, he almost intimated that he played at two different schools. Well, he did. He started CDs. <laughs> yeah. This is before the transfer rules. Uh, yeah, way before the transfer rules. Yeah, but, yeah. Here. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. I mean, there are players out there in, in our neck. Yeah, in our neck of the woods. Right. Yeah. I mean, right, you've got one up at Wellsboro that, without him, Wellsboro didn't go anywhere. No, you, 90% of our offense this entire year. I mean, you, you take a look at it, the one big game that, you know, Aiden Hauser for us doesn't play, we lose. And it happens to be the first round of District 4 playoffs. So, yeah. I mean, definitely didn't help our cause. But, yeah, I mean, he was a game changer for us. Yeah, players, players can do that, so. And coaches can do that too, and we've got we're going to see two great coaches going at it tomorrow. Yep. Ryan Meese, uh, what a job he's done. Atkins, great job. And uh, you know, Atkins. Even, the other thing is, like, you look at you can compare that to like St. Joe's. When their coach leaves, goes to Temple. Mm-hmm. He steps in, and they have not missed a beat. What a story that is. I mean, I mean that, that whole thing. I mean, think think about, and we can get to that when we talk six A, but. Gabe Infante leaves, and then Manny Diaz is gone a week later. Right. They St. Joe's literally had said, "You you don't have a place to come back to. Like we're, we're, we have moved on already from you know from you. No offense, but he did not have a home to go back to if, yeah. if yeah. he didn't stick with Temple. I mean, that, that's crazy. that's a crazy story. What where Gabe Infante might have been if if that Temple thing didn't pan out. I yeah. know it's amazing. So, guys, uh, we've gone up and down this, and we've gone off track. But, uh, uh, let me start off. I'm gonna, I'm going with Sheltonham tomorrow. I'm going with Sheltonham. I, I, I think they can win. I watched the film. I saw Archbishop Wood live. I don't think Wood is the mythical monster. And when you have a team like at Sheltonham who two years ago, like you said, only won two games. Two and eight, yep. They're not afraid of anything. They're not afraid. They're, they, they, you know... A lot of us are saying they don't belong there. They're, they're saying, we're going to win the championship. You know, so, I'm going to him. I, I don't think that's uh, too far-fetched. I think this is probably one of the closest games of the week. Uh, I'm just going to stick with Archbishop Wood, though. Uh, I like the championship pedigree. I like where Atkins has those guys. I like the fact that they're comfortable here. Uh, this, this may be a little starstruck for, for Cheltenham in the early going uh, before they settle in. Uh, but it's it, this could be a pinball game. It really could be, and, and so. I'm looking forward to seeing it. So I'll stick with the Vikings, but yeah, it would be like a one and a half star play. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Ed? Cheltenham's 14 and one in the last or this year, 12 game winning streak. They've outscored their or averaged 40 and a half points during that time. I think it's a track meet. Cheltenham slight advantage. Mm. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Wood. I picked them the other night with Epi, and I, it's. One of the things that I, I find interesting, a lot of back in the day, you'd say, "Well, a team already played at Hershey Park Stadium; they've got an advantage." Wood's not going to be intimidated by that. They got the guys that have, have coached there before. I, I just I like this team, this Wood team, where they're at in terms of figuring out ways to win games. And I, I don't again, Amoeba. I, if if this turns into a track meet, I think they, they can figure out a way to score points with them too. I'm going to I'm going to go with Wood. All right, we're split. The Eric's like the Wood, and. <laughs> I'm just gonna pick. I'm gonna pick somebody <laughs> different every step. Archbishop. This radio show. I'm gonna go with Cheltenham. This one. I'm gonna, you're gonna, gonna hedge. hedge. You're hedging. I'm gonna, that's right. right. I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna hedge. You got it. Yeah, you got it right there. So there you have it, folks. That's our breakdown on the five a game Friday night at seven o'clock. Hershey should be a great game, guys. And uh, we're gonna roll off into a commercial break, and we're gonna come back, and we're I'm gonna surprise these guys. We're gonna bring up a topic that you know I wanted to talk about. Oh God. And uh, we haven't. So and it's a football related topic. 
<laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. I would recommend becoming an official um, because you can feel like you're a part of a sport that you love. We officiate for the athletes and for the sport that we love. And so as long as you keep them first, then it's going to be a great experience. So the money I've made from officiating for the past few years, I've put all that money into savings to pay to finish my college education. In six months when I complete that, I will not be in any debt. Officiating the state championship and getting that call to officiate the state championship was an emotional thing for me just because of what I've been through, you know, the ups and downs. And getting that call really meant a lot to me. Sometimes I see student athletes uh, that I officiated years and years and years ago and they say, man, you did a great job. Thanks for, thanks for everything you've done. years, The Funding Zone has been Pennsylvania's best fundraising company for high school sports programs and youth organizations. From discount cards to coupon books, tumblers, cookie dough, apparel, and online giving, there are many ways in which The Funding Zone can help your team, booster club, or organization raise money. With six full-time representatives in Pennsylvania, there are no teams too big or small. We can assist with absolutely no minimums to buy or sell, no upfront fees or costs, and zero risk to your program. For more information, call or text Mike at the number below. Whether you're at Ted's 22, Ted's in Midtown, or Ted's in Anvil, you'll be sure to have a great experience with mouth-watering food, domestic and craft beers, along with every game, you'll be sure to be satisfied. We'll see you next time at one of our three awesome locations. Well, I guess we're back, guys. That's not it over there anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Lingotstown Gazette, Joe Gilloway. Welcome Thanks, to the Billy. broadcast, Joe. Thanks for bringing me on. Yeah, yeah. You know why we brought you here, right? No. <laughs> Eric, Eric can cover everything I can cover and a whole lot yeah. more. <laughs> well, we brought you here because you're just you're a local celebrity. No. And well, sure you are. Everybody knows who Joe. Everybody knows Joe Gilloway, right? Is this a everybody, setup? Or? I know. What's Joe. going on here? I know. Everybody <laughs> that reads. The Lingolstown Gazette and sees Joe Gilloway's broadcast knows Joe Gilloway. Right. Everybody might be a stretch, yeah. but you know, there's a couple <laughs> neighborhoods that might know who right. yeah. Lower Paxton Township, maybe. So, so, you know, before we left for a break, I said I was going to surprise you. It's not really that big a surprise, but uh, let's talk about this season and some of the surprises that we've seen this year. Joe, what, what, what surprised you? We already covered that Harrisburg clock surprise, but uh, who are some, some of the surprise teams and, and, you know, maybe some of the teams that you thought were going to be there and aren't and some of the teams that are did get there you, that just blew your mind? Well, I think there was a somewhat of a question mark surrounding Susquehanna Township. I think a lot of us in this area had high hopes, you know, seemed like the kind of the stars lined up, you know, they had some good skill position players, some good linemen, um, some good senior uh, leadership, and they, they just kind of fizzled at the end, you know. Um, it, they, I, arguably, they were a team that I thought could, could win 4A. I don't know about these guys. I mean, that was a discussion that a lot of people had. There was like three or four teams. Usually there's not that many in the, in the conversation, um, you know. They still had a good season. They just they just sort of fizzled out in districts, and, and I was surprised that they were that they did that early too. You know, yeah. I thought maybe they'd lose in the finals if they lost. Yeah, I, I'm gonna agree with you, Eric. Yeah, I think Joe made a point too about suspect Township. The talent was sort of there. Um, you could see it if it came together. If they stayed healthy, they weren't they weren't healthy the whole way. Jacob Siegel missed, the, missed a little time there late this season that hurt them. Uh, he's one of their most important players, uh, but it took them it took them a while to kind of find any kind of consistency. And then when they finally did, there were some injuries to deal with. Right. I thought Bishop McDevitt was in the same boat. Those guys real, never really gained any traction. Uh, it took them a long time to figure out that Marquise Williams, the freshman running back, 
uh, would be their go-to guy uh, once he started to kind of get more confidence, get more reps. Uh, of course, they played a little bit better, but nobody saw them losing to Lampier Strasburg no. in, in the playoffs. So those two teams were, I think, I think had were, were disappointing um, because we're used to seeing McDevitt win district titles. I mean, I think they've won eight of the last ten or something like that. Yeah. Uh, or close to a, them or Burke's Catholic has taken care of 4A. Um, you know, the Middletown loss uh, to why I'm missing, I think, was surprising to some because I think most figured that they could sort of do what Middletown does and sort of ride that offensive line, which had gotten exponentially better uh, from the be- maybe the midpoint of the season, uh, and they would be able to take out why I'm missing. It would be a good game. But they'd be able to kind of compete, and um, I'm not sure if they don't. If they beat why I'm missing, I'm not sure that they're not here, back in Hershey for the 3A. Uh, I think they match up very well with the Wyoming areas and Scranton preps and things like that yeah. in the world. So uh, I know they're I know they're tick off, and I think it's even though it's 10 and 2 is a good season for most. I think uh, I think Coach Myers in Middletown is uh, a little bit disappointed in that finish. Yeah, I think one of the surprises for me was Tamaqua this year. Yeah. Uh, Tamaqua and, and North Scoople, I talk about the co-region football a lot because I mean, in the beginning of the year, I thought North Scoople had what it took to get to the state championship. Now, of course, they lost their quarterback to a serious injury, and, you know, we still pray for him. But uh, Tamaqua took two losses early, and then they just – when they hit the playoffs, and the first time when I saw they beat North Scoople, I was like, oh, okay, wow, all right. I attributed, you know, North Google emotional breakdown, you know. Yeah, they went through a lot. And yeah. then they come out, and why I'm missing was a team I thought, after I saw them live, was going to go to Hershey. Mm-hmm. And when I saw the score from the Tamaqua game, I was like, are you kidding me? So for me, that was one of the big surprises for me. I was like, wow, where did Tamaqua come from? <laughs> and, you know, so that was a shocker for me to see that happen. There were probably three for me. One was Mechanicsburg locally because, I mean, that program was a doormat until this season. Right. All of a sudden, district playoffs. And maybe they have something now that they can build on for the future, which is good for them because they have not been relevant or right in probably about, you know, what, 12 years, 13 yep. years, yep. something like that. So good to see them back. Um, you know, Brooks Catholic was a surprise to me too because we saw them week two when they played Central to Off. And, and you talk to a lot of the people around the program, and they're like, listen, we're not – as good as we were last year, we replaced all these guys. We're trying to piece it together. They got on a heck of a run, and, you know, they get why I'm missing game, and then they get in the district playoffs, and a lot of people thought that they might make a, a finals run when they got there. And I, I got to tip a cap to Mike Whitehead, too, because Cumberland Valley, the way, not just not because they rebounded from the previous season. It's the fact that, and Epp knows this, midway through the year, what, did they have, like half a roster? Oh, yeah. I mean, they yeah. were decimated by injuries up and down their lineup after that central often loss, and he was able to, to patch everything together, keep them as a unit. There's a, there was a lot of whispers about his job even during the season and things like that there. They were kind of able to fight all that back, almost beat State College at Beaver Stadium, mm-hmm. almost beat Man- and <clears throat> they're, they're playing at a level where, it, it, I mean, listen, Manheim Township, they win that game in double overtime. That offensive line became a championship offensive line in the third quarter of that game. They, I've said this repeatedly for a month now. They, at some point in that third quarter, on the sideline, they just said, we, "We've had enough of this. Just get behind us. We'll make the. We'll, we're going to make it work. Just go." Yeah. And <clears throat> they got a great running back in Timmy Smith right now. You can't be one dimensional against St. Joe's Prep. You're going to have to take chances. You're, you're going to have to ex- accept what they give you in some cases. You're going to have to be, if you're watching this game as a fan, you're going to have to be patient, too, because there's going to be drives where first down is going to be a one-yard gain, second down is going to be a one-yard loss, and then you got to figure it out on third down. Right. Yeah. It's going to happen in this game if you're a central offense, but you cannot, under any circumstance, be one-dimensional against this team. If you think you're just going to show up and your line's going to pound them up front and that's how you're going to win the game, that's how you're going to win the game, but you have to add the compliment to it. If they can do that in this game... It's going to be a four-quarter game. I mean, there's a lot of mojo on, on, on CD's side. Things sort of add in their favor, like with these kids maybe not playing for St. Joe's. Um, I, don't, I don't know. It's it's a – it's a. have I've said this to Epp when we got here tonight. I've kind of come down a little bit more, so it's more like a 50-50 game to me. But I, I think this is legitimately their t- St. Joe's I, toughest I, I, task to win a state title that they've yeah, had. Yeah, I think so too, and I agree. And, you know, Joe, I want to talk about the quarterback, Max Mosey. Um, the beginning of the year, he kind of had the reins held back on him. 
for a while. And I think we were at that game together, the Harrisburg game, and I think that Harrisburg game is a game where Glenn McNamee said, okay, we're going to loosen him up a little bit. They came out in the second half, and they, they loosened up a little bit, and they started tossing the ball around. And I, I believe that was his coming out game. That was – that was do you, you agree with that? Totally agree, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, he I, led that team down the field twice. They brought him along, I think, brilliantly this year, and that's what you're kind of alluding to. And I mean, at no point in the season did I think he was ever playing poorly. He just wasn't offering to the offense any, anywhere near, let's say, the thir first third of the season what he started offering the offense in the second third. And then the last third or the last five or six games, he just kind of – Coach Mack got a lot more confidence in him, and he's allowing him to throw passes like across the middle. That's Harrisburg. I mean, a couple of those passes he threw against Harrisburg, he wasn't throwing those – even attempting those passes earlier in the season, especially against better quality competition. And um, a friend of mine, his son has played basketball with Max for three or four years, and he's been telling me since Max was 12 years old, you gotta see this Max Mosey kid, you gotta see this Max Mosey kid. And I'd ask him, what about him? He's just his poise, his toughness. And uh, I mean, he just steps back in the pocket, and it's almost like he's standing on his heels. He's so comfortable in there. He's waiting for something to develop, and it's hard to teach that. Yeah, yeah. It really is hard to teach that. For me, with Central Dolphin, also in that game, I saw a defense that matured in four quarters. Vargas, Chimeni, they they controlled that game in the second half, and I, you know, like you said, kind of Central Dolphin has gone in stages this year. They, they, it was almost like a warm up. And then their defense took over for a while. And their defense, I would say, got them through the state college game. And then that's when their offense kicked in. Epps partner, Andy Shan, his radio show, likes to say that they can wreck a game. They can literally wreck a football game. They can tear your heart out. In a matter, they did it to Will Howard last week at yep. Downingtown. They did it to state college, and they did it all in the span of four minutes in both yeah. games. They, they are... I, I find it really interesting when Harrisburg was getting ready to play Archbishop Hoban earlier this year. And Penn Live was running all these stories about the preview in the game, and you know it's a national opponent and everything. And one of the Harrisburg players, I think it was Saquon Carter Barton, said that we that the game against Hoban reminded them of the district final game against Central Dauphin. He didn't say that Central Dauphin reminded them of Hoban. Right. He said that Hoban reminded them of Central Dauphin. If that doesn't tell you how physical this defense wants to get with people, that he is comparing a, a top ten team in the country to this team saying that they're almost like this other team. Yeah, right. I, I don't know what, what, what's going to tell you about their defense, how physical He, he told me that personally. He said that, uh, you know, and they're, they're rivals, you know, Harrisburg and Central Dolphin. But uh, Saquon worked with Linglestown Gazette a couple times just as an intern, so we got to talking, and, and he came right out and just said, that, that team puts a hurting on you, you know. And they beat them twice last year, but <clears throat> yeah. they put a hurting on them and I'll, I'll, while they were losing to them. They are beating a clean-hitting team. Mm -hmm. They're not a dirty hitting team. They are clean. They just smack you right in the mouth. Right. And they're also very opportunistic. Oh, big time. Yeah, very big time. opportun. They they seem to know when that ball is going to hit the ground. They're sneaky. They're they're they're, they're sneaky. They just know. I mean, it's like, I you know, I wouldn't have said Central Dolphin is going to be where they are mid season, and I don't think you would have either. He knows I didn't say this like after he week, did not. Yeah, yeah, after week three. And, and I only point to this guy because he covers <laughs> Central Dolphin religiously and Joe too. But you know, I'm looking forward to this game. I should think be a good game. You know, I think we're gonna have a bunch of good games this weekend. I really, really do. Let's hope. I do. Uh, Billy, I guaranteed you. I saw you <clears throat> West Shore Stadium. It might have been Harrisburg Cedar Cliff. Game three or something like. Remember that? I guarantee you that Mannheim Township would win District 3. He did. You I, did. Man. And you know what? You and every other person that writes an article in sports did the same it's thing. It's kind of a poor, I don't know where I was coming from there, because Central Dolphin lost arguably their top two offensive linemen, one in the first play of the game, one in the second yeah. series of the game, right? No, first it was the first series. That first game. series, and then after first he got the first down. Game, yeah, yeah, right. So both in the first series. And they only won the game by a field goal with a minute and four left. So where I got off making that prediction. I don't know. I just was very impressed by Mannheim Township. Uh, you know, we could actually slide Mannheim Township into the surprise category. 
We were all kind of surprised. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I mean, that CD had to know. play their tails off to yeah. beat that team and, and you know, by one. Really play their tails uh, off. You know, I mean, in Manhattan Township, really, that, that game was the first. Well, it wasn't really the first time, too, but you, you understood right. what Max Mosey meant because they went downfield five times in the first half looking for something. And that never happens to Central Dollar. No. You know what I mean? And remember yeah. that, that Mannheim game, too. The, the thing that sticks in my mind, he had two long passes on that, what eventually is that tying drive, yeah. called back because of penalties, yep. and still got them down the field and still, still tied Still moved the game. them down, yep. yeah. His toughness is unquestioned. I mean, he's a tough hombre. I so, think, so we've talked about it. I, before I go, I want to say one more thing. I think that Downingtown West might have been like the fifth best team that Central Dolphin played this year. And I probably would not say that if I was you know, down in that District you know, 1 territory, you know, State College. I travel Man, all I, over the state. I go to games might. from Philadelphia to Erie and everywhere, and I tell them all the same thing. This you year You guys now. should pray that you are not in the Mid-Pen Commonwealth. This league, year, because yeah. That Most is, years. year in and year out, one of the toughest leagues, year in and year out. That is a battle. When you win the Commonwealth, you did something. And it's very rare you did it undefeated. Well, plus we had the addition to, and this we talked about this in the preseason, about how Section 1 and LL and Lex or Lebanon League would be on even ground with Mid-Pen, oh, yeah. if yeah. not better, yeah. than the Mid-Pen Commonwealth this year. You had Township. You had team like Wilson, who was I mean, really hard to beat. Yeah, you were. know, And so those guys, too, also made the districts really tough. So when you talk about battle tested, nobody's more battle tested than the Rams. Yeah, what a, what a, what a and then state college isn't even part of the district. Exactly. You know, well, what comes that? And yeah. they should be, but that's another subject. Yeah. So I'm going to go Central Dolphin. Mm. I'm, I'm giving them the win. I think Central Dolphin has enough. I, I don't think St. Joe's has seen a defense like they're about to see, and I don't think St. Joe's has seen an offensive line. Like they're about to see that offensive line for Central Dolphin. Moves he read right. all my notes, by the way. Your notes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 I say Central Dolphin by a score. All I need is the Ram head because you know what I'm picking. Class of '98, baby. Why did we bring the Ram head? I, I oh. wish we should have done it like course, though. I could have put it on. Do Does head? anybody have a Ram head in their pocket? They got a helmet here, but that wouldn't fit my fat head. Uh, Sam- Samir Hagens and Maurice Clark. Pay attention to these two guys. Uh, wideouts for St. Joe's Preps. Often it's the guys that you overlook. The point. Because you got all sides uh, focused on Mr. Harrison. Um, I think St. Joe's Prep, the pedigree's there. I think they have played a defense. They played IMG. And nearly beat IMG Academy, nationally ranked. Uh, Marion, Georgia was nationally ranked when they played them. It was a different so team that played them. It, it was a different team, but we're not quite sure who's going to show up there in uniform yet on Saturdays. So a lot of time between now and Saturday at 6 p.m. All right. So there could be some changes uh, for St. Joe's Prep. I'm going to take the Hawks, but I think this is a whale of a ball game. It comes right down to it. You got me breaking out in a sweat over here. I usually don't make predictions well, you, when it comes you, you to you St. Joe's Prep. Because you're not going to get out of here. You're not going to get out of here until you make that prediction. <laughs> 26-24 Rams. Oh, you went with the score even. All right. So I, I we had a four, the score. Picked we the, the Rams score. this yeah, week, yeah. Right? And the crowd is happy. Joe so Gilway, not taking the hook. No hook. No, 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 no hook. No hook. Right. No. no hook. So there you have it, folks. That's our 6A breakdown. And, Thank you. Uh, you know, we're happy to bring that to you. Joe Gilloway from Lincoln Style Gazette. Thanks, Joe. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, at this, you know, I do want to thank Ted's, Ted's Bar and Grill for having us here. Yes. Uh, got to pick 3A Great yet. food. we got to pick 3A. We're not done yet. We're not done yet, but I do want to give a sponsor shout I'm just making sure. I'm making sure. A shout out to the Funding Zone. We got their pens right here, the funding zone. I want to shout out to I didn't all get a, of our sponsors. I didn't get a pen. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Eric Eppler now has a funding zone pen. But uh, while we bring Brian Tuschinski back over here, um, I just want to thank I want to thank Sean Oliveri for being here for production. Uh, I know it was a scramble for you, but you got her done. And uh, looking forward to doing some more work for you. So we're going to keep rolling here. You can, you can say it. We're gonna have this show on the YouTube, okay? But the the people that didn't see the first half of the show, we had some technical difficulties. We got her worked out. We'll get her on. 
He's going to stay up till 1 o'clock in the morning and get it on YouTube for me. Mm. So we'll rebroadcast this, but it'll always be available. We'll run it out there tomorrow so you can see the first half. Uh, let's get to the 3A game on Saturday at noon, which, guys, I think is another interesting game. And, you know, if this, if this weekend is anything like the playoffs have been from district playoffs on, I think we're in for a great weekend because you, you and I have talked on the phone – many Friday nights after games, but the scores this year and the games this year in the playoffs have been phenomenal. Brian. Agreed. You've seen some great games down in District 11. Yes, definitely this year. Thanks for coming. Yeah, Parklands and Bethlehem Freedoms and Bethlehem, Bethlehem Catholic. Freedom, Bethlehem Catholic. Nazareth had a really good season this year. And they beat the daylights out of each other down there. Yes, they do. <laughs> every year, every, week is a every year. It's so much fun from the outside, too, watching who's going to be the team that kind of rises up. Parker was down and out early. And then uh, some of the folks I rely on down there, you know, doing the state rankings, they're like, uh, keep an eye on Parker. It was like week five or six. They still hadn't really found their traction. But all of a sudden, boom, 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 they started stacking up wins. Nazareth was the most consistent, but you had freedom was in that park. You always got to. Easton is always the X factor. They you don't are. know yeah. what's going on there. They're good. They're not you good. Know? They're good. Look out. It's, it's yeah. Southern Lehigh this year. Southern yeah. Lehigh had a good year. Yeah. Fantastic year. But District 11 football to me is like, it's it's so much fun following it oh, from it afar. It, it really is. is. It is. And, yeah. you know, I think we had that talk last year on this show about District 11 and the whole yep. region and how amazing it was to watch some teams battle. I mean, yeah, we have the Whitfield teams out there battling and the great tradition and stuff like that, but... Boy, I just love watching that. Just from North Google right into Parkland and all those teams in between. You know, Bethlehem Catholic. Who, who'd have thought they would have bowed out so early? Oh, we had, right. And we had a little uptick from Allentown Central Catholic, too, which yes. has been a while. So that was nice to see. You well, know? they've got a great, great quarterback down there, too. So mm -hmm. let's get on to this game. Uh, Brian, you know Wyoming, Wyoming area pretty good, right? Decent, yeah. 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 So <laughs> what do you think of Wyoming area? Um, I seen them for the first time against uh, Tamaqua last week. They shut Tamaqua out. You know, it was 21 nothing. Uh, DeLuca, a quarterback, had a, a really good game, both running, throwing the football. Yeah, yeah. They spread, as, they spread it around. Goes, as DeLuca goes, Wyoming area goes. Exactly. He he is a very very good athlete. Uh, he does it all for Wyoming area. Pretty you much. You have to stop him, and he's one of those guys. I I saw Wyoming area two weeks ago. He's one of those guys where they say, all you got to do is stop him. Easier How many said than done. have you heard that <laughs> right. and, and it don't happen? I don't know. Some of these dual threat guys, there's no way to kind of stop them. The only thing is you kind of pinch them. You can kind of pinch them and try to keep them in the box. But Dudley's a guy who's really, really elusive. Um, so, you know, Central Valley, to me, learned a ton and, and sort of started this swing, too, with that loss to TJ. I mean, they were looking for an opponent to kind of test them. TJ came in 28-3 to loss. It does a lot for you. You yeah. can go one of each, one or you know, one or the other way, and and that's what Central Valley did. So I think Lions has done tremendous for that, for that team to kind of kick them back into gear. Oh yeah. And and they're here for first time in what? It's been a couple years. It's been, been a few years. Three, yeah. three, something like that. I wrote it down somewhere, and I don't have it with me. But it's uh, been the last couple it's been years. A while. They've been yeah, here. Yeah. It's been a while since they've been here, but uh, you know, and then you have the Fitzsimmons brothers are, are very, very, very chaos. They're, they're, they're incredible. <laughs> Get your athletic program the recognition it deserves and student athletes the recognition that they need for college with Circle W Sports. Circle W Sports is a fully functional platform to run your school district's entire athletic department. Build a district-wide or team-centered website. Fully manage your schedules, rosters, and coaching staff. Track your student athlete stats across all sports and games during their careers with our all-encompassing statistical platform. And create press about your district, teams, and student athletes in ways that traditional media cannot do. Plus, Circle W Sports helps bring your trophy cases to life. Showcase your team's championships, college athletes, head coaches, and varsity records. Just enter your data and let the Circle W Sports platform do the rest. It's really been a one-stop shop for college coaches where they can go in there and they can find information about not only one player, but the rest of our team, guys that they might not be thought they were interested in before they went to the website. So Circle W has really done that. It links highlight films, contact information, and everything that the coach would need. 
From scores, stats, and standings to rosters, records, and team history, Circle W Sports is the online platform to thoroughly promote your school district athletic teams and student athletes. Circle W has been absolutely outstanding in doing that for our student athletes. Teams don't have to scout us because all they have to do is go to the site. Now we're having our kids being recognized, uh, not only within the state, um, outside the state, thousands of miles away. Uh, college coaches, as far as recruiting, things like that, are really recognizing our guys and what they're doing and putting our program on the map. Take it from two former Wellsboro student athletes. Growing up in a small town. It's important to get your name out there if you want to play at the next level. Circle W Sports helped me get the exposure I needed. From the creator of WellsboroAthletics.com and WellsboroFootball.com, Circle W Sports is now the official online platform for PIAA District 4 and the Northern Tier League. Contact us today at CircleWSports.com. Circle W Sports, the new name in the game for high school sports. At Lazar Lumber, we have it all. Many brands of kitchen cabinetry, countertops, vanities of all types and sizes and easy access showers we have windows from brands you know like anderson and marvin interior and exterior doors many styles and colors of decking and railing plus railing accents and all your construction needs for building roofing and siding for your next building project visit lesnerlumber.com quality you can build on at Game Changer Sports Ministry, we use a sports platform to teach our faith-based team values of teamwork, excellence, authority, and maturity. Each summer, we offer our Game On faith-based sports camps featuring lacrosse, softball, volleyball, cross-country, soccer, tennis, and golf. Our camps are led by top NCAA coaches and athletes. Another mission of Game Changer Sports Ministries is our student-led and student-run teams for high schools and colleges. A team is a faith-based sports club. Check out our website for more information. I would recommend becoming an official um, because you can feel like you're a part of a sport that you love. We officiate for the athletes and for the sport that we love and so as long as you keep them first then it's going to be a great experience. So the money I've made from officiating for the past few years I've put all that money into savings to pay to finish my college education. In six months when I complete that I will not be in any debt. Officiating the state championship and getting that call to officiate the state championship was an emotional thing for me just because of what I've been through, you know, the ups and downs. And the, getting that call really meant a lot to me. Sometimes I see student athletes uh, that I officiated years and years and years ago and they say, man, you did a great job. Thanks for, thanks for everything you've done. years, the Funding Zone has been Pennsylvania's best fundraising company for high school sports programs and youth organizations. From discount cards to coupon books, tumblers, cookie dough, apparel, and online giving, there are many ways in which the Funding Zone can help your team, booster club, or organization raise money. With six full-time representatives in Pennsylvania, there are no teams too big or small. We can assist with absolutely no minimums to buy or sell, no upfront fees or costs, and zero risk to your program. For more information, call or text Mike at the number below. Whether you're at Ted's 22, Ted's in Midtown, or Ted's in Anvil, you'll be sure to have a great experience with mouth-watering food, domestic and craft beers, along with every game, you'll be sure to be satisfied. We'll see you next time at one of our three awesome locations.